warm welcome to part one of this Harry Potter sleep saga. This is a magical sleep story adventure where you are the main character. In tonight's story, you begin your journey as a new wizard and take an enchanting trip to Diagon Alley where you will enter the very heart of the wizarding world. As you take a moment to get comfortable now, remind yourself that this is your story and your adventure. Anyone that you meet along the way throughout this saga can be whoever you want them to be. They might be people from your own life, a famous figure that you admire, or a character from the books. There are no limits here, so be sure to bring your own unique imagination along for the ride. Before we begin, we will do a short breathing pattern called 445. This is designed to help you slow down and quiet your mind after a long and busy day, preparing you for a good night's sleep and allowing your imagination to unlock. So, when you are ready, just exhale any remaining breath that you have and as you feel the urge to breathe in, then inhale for four. Hold it here for four. And release for five. Allow the body to become heavy and the mind to empty. So that's in for four, hold for four, and out for five, imagine that you are blowing away any remaining worries or thoughts, this is your time to relax, again in for four, hold for four, and out for five, just let all of it go, continue to breathe in this way in your own time, and allow yourself to sink deeper and deeper into comfort. And now, allow your breath to return to a natural rhythm. Let your thoughts turn to those of magic, wonder and adventure, as we begin part one of our Harry Potter sleep saga, A Mysterious Letter. It is a bright and beautiful morning 
at the end of August, and you are sitting in your bedroom, keeping cool in the summer heat. A small fan blows gently round the room, and a refreshing tingle washes over your face and body with its passing. Outside the open window, the sapphire sky is peppered with a wisp of cloud and backed by a golden sunrise. The sound of morning birds begins to drift into your room and the bright green leaves of the trees outside ripple gently with the soft breeze. Directly opposite your window and across the street, you notice a small black and white cat lying out flat under the shade of a tree, fast asleep. Occasionally, you see their eyes flick up as one or two birds cross its path above them. But it's far too warm to consider chasing birds today. Once or twice, the cat looks directly at you, and you can't shake the feeling that they know something you don't. As you sit in your room, you find yourself remembering the dream you had last night, the dream you have most nights. The details are vivid. You see yourself standing outside a tall, beautiful castle with high grey towers and a courtyard of stone. Standing next to you is your best friend, one of the most important people in your life, and you both share a smile. You wear long, dark robes and carry a magic wand. Crowds of wizards are running back and forth happily, hurrying to lessons or enjoying a game with their friends. It feels safe here, secure and comforting. In this dream, you feel as though you have walked through the front door of your own home. The castle feels like an old friend that you have reunited with at last. You know that you have never seen that castle, only in your dreams. You're not even sure if it's real, but you have always felt that there is something different about you, something unique, and you'd be right to think so. You suddenly wake from the memory of your dream as you notice the outside breeze quickly change direction. The hairs on the back of your neck stand on end. You feel different. You know today holds something special for you. In that moment, you hear a low hooting sound. And as you turn to look out of your window, you can hardly believe your eyes when you see a small brown owl flying steadily towards your window, something hanging from its beak. With a graceful beat of its wings, the owl lands softly on the outside ledge, hooting happily, having found its destination. It hops inside the window onto a small table nearby, patting its feet excitedly as its tiny head cocks to one side inquisitively. An excitement builds in your stomach. You have a feeling that all of your dreams are about to come true. The little owl hops toward you three times, three tiny hops, 
urging you to take the piece of paper from its beak. As you take it from the owl, you see that it is not a piece of paper, but a letter. A letter written in emerald calligraphy on a cream parchment. A letter addressed to you. Your eyes widen with amazement as you turn the letter in your hands and find an unbroken wax seal on the back. The seal bears a crest divided into four and in each quarter is a different animal. A lion, a serpent, an eagle and a badger. Unable to resist, you break the seal and remove the letter from the envelope, unfolding the parchment. Across the top, in capital letters, reads the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, and next to it is the same emblem as the wax seal, this time hand-drawn in black ink and pulsing with a steady light. Your heart beats in anticipation, and you read on excitedly as the message in the letter reveals something that deep down you have always known. There is a power in you, a magical power, and you are no ordinary soul. You are a wizard. It should be a surprise, and yet it feels as though every day of your life has been leading to this moment. It all makes sense. You notice a long paper ticket fall out of the letter, dated 11 o'clock tomorrow morning for the Hogwarts Express, leaving from platform nine and three quarters. On a separate piece of paper is a long list of equipment, books, and items needed before your term starts. There is also a small silver key with a tag hanging from it. The writing on the tag conveys the fact that your muggle money is no more. It has been transferred, and your new wizarding money awaits you now in your vault at the Great Goblin Bank, and it can be opened with this key. You have no idea where to find any of these things, but you know the letter holds the answer. Your eyes are drawn once again to the pulsing emblem at the top, and then you watch in amazement as a new message is being handwritten onto your letter in real time. The note reads, When you are ready to begin your adventure, gaze upon the crest and speak the words, Take me there. For a moment, you hesitate. Everything seems to be happening so quickly and your whole life is about to change. With a deep breath, you remind yourself that while change can be scary, it's far better than standing still. A world of magic, of wonder and possibility awaits you. A smile grows on your face as you stare at the glowing emblem and repeat the words, take me there. A magical sensation ripples through your body, and a warm, comforting darkness surrounds you. It feels as though you are becoming one with nature, and gliding through the air. 
the letter acts as a port key, and you are being taken to an enchanting realm. You land perfectly on two feet on a thin, cobbled street. For a moment, you are slightly disoriented, but as you take stock of your surroundings, you realise you are in the heart of London, but a very different London to the one you know. It feels like an old town, set in another place and time, away from the hustle and bustle of city centre life. The small crooked streets are hidden away. No one could find this place by themselves. The streets are narrow and dark, the sun is beaming across the sky, but right now its light only grazes the top of the thatched roofs high above you. Then, in a surreal moment, you see a small black and white cat appearing from a tiny alleyway further down the path. The cat approaches calmly and sits opposite you, looking up with a kind curiosity as its tail swishes left and right in no particular rhythm. Was it a trick of the light, or did this very familiar cat give you a slow wink? They stand up on all fours and begin to walk through your legs, swooping in a figure eight, giving off a gentle purr. Then it begins to walk ahead of you, flicking its tail in a gesture, and you know when it turns around to look at you that this graceful animal is inviting you to follow. You come to a cobbled stone wall, and as the cat approaches it, a small arched walkway emerges through the middle, appearing like an optical illusion. You follow the cat through the tight, dimly lit alleyway. The occasional lantern hangs on the curved ceiling providing patches of golden light guiding your way. You carry on, changing direction ever so slightly, to the right, the left, left again, and right, before you come to a straight and narrow passage. At the end is a rickety old wooden door, and at the bottom sits your new friend, waiting patiently as you slowly approach the door. You place a hand against the wooden frame, and a warm, tingling sensation runs through your arm. You flick the latch and push open the door. A golden sunlight washes down over you now, and as your eyes adjust, you see a long cobbled street filled with magical shops and crowded with wizards just like you. The buildings are tall and slightly lean over the narrow street. But the sun is placed perfectly in the sky, illuminating 
the entire alley. The cobbled road continues in a gentle zigzag as far as you can see and is lined with the many colours of the magical shops. A small metal sign is attached to the wall on your right. Diagon Alley. You continue to follow your new companion as they lead you through the crowds. Occasionally, they look back to check on you and make sure you haven't lost your way. But how could you be lost here? It feels just like home. You are right where you belong. It is a breathtaking sight, one that you will never forget. As you turn to look behind, you notice the wooden door has disappeared, keeping this perfect place hidden from the Muggle world. You check your letter once again to see where to go next. The first instruction is to visit the Wizarding Bank and give your key to the Head Goblin. Only then will you be taken to your vault. Your furry companion leads the way as you both walk down the street. The many wizards who pass you by give you a welcoming smile. Some are on their own, carrying many bags and scribbling items off their list. Others are in groups, laughing and playing games. You pass a collection of shops lined up on each side of you. In the green bay window of the shop to your left, you see a beautiful array of broomsticks with brown, black and even silver handles. Some have smooth edges and curved branches. Others are more rugged and rustic. A congregation of wizards eye the broomsticks with desperation. A purple storefront sits on your right with mannequins in different robes and uniforms and many wizards trying on hats and jumpers. Outside the shop sits a long bookshelf with many second-hand books. But inside, through the window, you spy an enormous library, and the smell of old parchment drifts out into the street. You pass by a long line of wizards waiting to go into the next building on your left. The wand makers, to be given their very first and hopefully only wand. The next shop has a beautiful array of animals outside. Some are in cages. Owls, mainly, but there are also cats roaming free, rabbits, bats, and many more wonderful creatures. You look straight ahead now, and in front of you is a tall, slanted building, standing proudly high above the rest of the street, 
and held up by thick, circular columns, as white as snow and lined with gold. The Great Goblin Bank At the entrance of the golden doors stands a three-foot goblin with large pointy ears, a long hooked nose and square glasses resting on top. They wear a dark red uniform, again lined with gold, and their thick brown beard rests on the collar of their jacket. In their long fingers they hold a silver quill and a tightly rolled piece of parchment. The black and white cat leaps up onto a marble ledge and curls up for an afternoon nap. They will wait for you here while you take a trip inside the bank. As you climb the marble steps and approach the door, the goblin raises their hand and signals for you to wait there. You see the tightly rolled parchment remove itself from the goblin's grip and unravel in front of their face. The paper hits the floor and continues rolling down the steps, almost into the street. The goblin asks for your name, and you politely tell them. The parchment begins to slowly roll itself up again as the goblin scans each line. For a moment, you are met with doubt, convinced now that there must have been some mistake and you will soon be sent back to the Muggle world. But then, the goblin places a finger on the parchment and it stops rolling. They take their quill and put a line through your name on the scroll. They step back and gesture to the door. So it is real. You truly are a wizard. You look back down along the street, still full of life, and back to the sleepy cat, whose help you are grateful for today. You turn back to the large golden door before pushing it open and walking inside. The halls are white, again held up by gold marbled columns in a long row towards the middle of the bank. On each side of you are collections of dark brown desks with a goblin perched at each one working away and lit by an old-fashioned lamp with a small chain hanging from it. The atmosphere is quiet now and still. The only sound is that of the many goblins scribbling on bank papers. It is a proud but unusual place. Nonetheless, you feel an excitement just being here, and there is a comfort in the quiet air. You begin to walk down the long hallway of the bank and toward a large golden white plinth, on which rests a mahogany desk and there sits the head of the goblin bank, proud and commanding. As you approach the stand, the head goblin holds out a hand and requests your key for examination. You take the key from your pocket, but before you can hand it over, it is lifted out of your grip by magic. 
and floats across the desk into the goblin's long fingers. They turn the key thrice in hand and examine it under a tiny golden machine with eight different magnifiers. At last they lift their head, telling you that all is well, and if you'd like to follow their colleague, they will take you to your vault. From behind the plinth emerges an even smaller goblin, but their face is far friendlier than any goblin you have seen so far. They greet you with a bow and a smile, and you return the gesture. They wave your key in the air and almost skip with delight down a small corridor to your left. You cannot help but laugh at this cheeky fellow, and you follow the young goblin down the corridor. They lead you to a dark room lit by small oil lanterns, where in front of you sits a strange contraption. It looks like a mine cart, but the wheels stick out to the side of the main body and attach to the track. The track goes on through a tunnel as far as you can see. The body of the cart has four seats and several levers, and you have no idea what any of them do. The young, happy-faced goblin gives you an excited smile and tells you to climb into the cart. You are cautious at first, but he reassures you that there are hundreds of magical enchantments protecting this cart and that you are perfectly safe. This is the safest place in the wizarding world, except, of course, the magical castle where you are destined to go. As you step in the cart and buckle yourself into a seat, he tells you that the green lever in front of you dictates the speed of the cart and you can personally control it by simply pulling or pushing on the lever. You are completely safe and completely in control. Any hesitation is met with a new excitement as you hear the goblin push forward on his lever and the cart pulls away. You begin to journey through the dark tunnel with a high ceiling and filled with a soft blue light. The smell of damp rock lingers in the air and you can hear the goblin chuckling away happily. They turn to you with a smile and tell you that this is their favourite part of the job. Before you know it, the cart emerges from the tunnel and you enter a vast underground cavern full of shining crystals that decorate the open space with a rainbow of light. To your left is a long flowing waterfall cascading over the dark rocks and down below. As you control the speed of your journey, the cart takes you on long, sweeping corners, first to the right and then round to the left. You take in the wonderful, multicolored crystals all around you as you enjoy the soothing journey.
a gentle wind strokes your cheeks and trickles over your arms. The goblin points to the waterfall and tells you you are about to witness something incredible. In that moment, the cart changes direction onto a new track and curves round towards the waterfall. There is a large gap between the flowing water and the rock face, creating a tunnel of water, and the new track leads you round behind the waterfall. You slow the cart right down and disappear under the tunnel of water. Through the pure and clear water, you see a kaleidoscope of color. Scarlet, sapphire, emerald, deep purple, and a bright yellow. All of these coming from the many crystals in the cave and shining through the water. Then a rainbow of dust from all the crystals begins to float around you, filling you with a beautiful magic. It is a mesmerizing thing to witness. As you come round the other side of the waterfall, the cart slowly descends and twists right into another tunnel now, much larger than the last, and decorated with yellow lanterns on the walls. At regular intervals, you notice there are large alcoves embedded in the walls, and each one has its own platform behind which stands a tall, high-security door, riddled with locks. Then, at the end of the tunnel, you see a platform straight ahead, and you know that this is the one. As the cart comes to a stop, the goblin releases your buckles and you step out onto the dusty platform. In front of you now stands a tall black door with a beautiful humming sound coming from within. The four digit number on the door is your date of birth, month then year. This vault has had your name on it from the day you were born. You have dreamt of this day your entire life, and now you are here. The goblin turns to you with a hop. He tells you that when he puts in the key, you need to place your hand on the door, as that is the only combination that will open it. He shuffles the key into the lock, and you rest your hand in the exact middle. You feel the door shudder. This ripples through your arm as the door gives way and opens from the middle. The left side swings out toward you, and the right panel opens inwards to the vault.
your vault is illuminated by a soft light in your favorite color and a single hanging oil lantern. Inside are all of your most valued possessions, safe and protected here. In one corner rests a large pile of coins, gold, silver, and bronze, all yours. On top of the pile is a small handwritten note, which you take between your fingers. A short letter from the headmaster. They wish you luck in your adventure today, collecting your books and equipment and your wand, and they look forward to meeting you when you arrive at the castle. You fold up the letter, take a few handfuls of coins, and place them in your pocket. You turn around with a new excitement as you leave your vault. As you get back into the cart, and set off on your return journey, your mind begins to wander as you take in everything that has happened and you realize how lucky you feel in this moment. You are grateful for this day, grateful to the owl for bringing you your letter, to the cat for guiding your way and grateful for the fact that this wonderful, magical world is yours now. Before you know it, the cart pulls up at the original platform. You unbuckle your belt and climb out of the cart. The cheeky little goblin leads you back towards the main hall. On the way, they talk happily to you, telling you about all their duties here at the Great Goblin Bank. They are in charge of looking after your vault and they promise to keep everything safe and in perfect order for your return. As you reach the main door, the goblin hugs your leg tightly and they wish you well on your journey and hope you come back soon. You kneel down and thank them for all their help and their wonderful company. You push open the door and wander back into the magical street. As you return into the afternoon sun and into the bustling alley, you see a wizard standing next to your black and white cat, stroking its head and looking at you with a mischievous glint in their eye. After a quick double take, you soon realize it is your best friend, one of the most important people in your life. You run to them and share a warm hug. Your best friend tells you they too received a letter this morning and had to find their way to this magical place. They had only just received their wand when this lovely cat greeted them in the street and brought them here to wait for you. An uncontrollable smile fills your face and you peer behind you to check in on your furry companion. Indeed, the black and white cat now sits proudly upright on the wall next to you, 
purring softly. They give you an affectionate blink, a sign of trust between animal and human. You cannot believe this little cat has brought your best friend directly to you. The cat has done their duty today. They have brought you here safely, and they will stay here now to help other stranded new wizards find their way. You give them a farewell scratch behind the ear, and they brush their cheek against your hand. You truly hope that your paths will cross again soon. You join your best friend, and together you continue to make your way back through this enchanted street. You turn and share one final look with the cat, who is still watching over you. The day is in full swing now. Shopkeepers stand outside their doors, welcoming new customers, and their young assistants hurry around, pushing trolleys full of books, potion bottles, robes, and suitcases. You see many wizards carrying their new animals. One holds a small toad. Another cradles a puppy. And a third has a brown and white owl resting on their shoulder. The empty cage in their hand. You come at last to a purple fronted building with silver writing across the top. This is the place for new wizards to be fitted into their uniforms and robes and where you will find all the books you could possibly need. You open the purple wooden door and enter the store followed by your friend Inside, one or two wizards are being fitted into uniforms upstairs, as others quietly move through the tall bookshelves on the ground floor. Purple curtains are tied back behind the windows, where the sun beams in spotlights on the tiled floor. From above you, at the top of the stairs, a squat elderly witch calls down to you, telling you that if you'd like to be fitted into new robes, then head up the stairs and she will be with you in a moment. Your best friend leads the way, and you both climb the thin rickety staircase. The wooden handrail is loose and moves in your grip. As you reach the top, the lady's assistant takes your friend to be fitted into their new robes. As you watch them disappear round a corner, the old lady approaches you with a warm and welcoming smile, beckoning you to follow her. With a bubbling excitement, you follow her lead, and she takes you round to the left where a small fitting room awaits, covered by a thick purple curtain. Wand in hand, the lady draws back the curtain, and you head inside. There is a circular wooden platform, which the lady tells you to stand on and hold out your arms. In that moment, a small, compact tape measure floats into the booth. The tape measure begins to glide around you, first stretching out across your arms, then 
wrapping gently around your waist, up to your chest, and across your shoulders. It stretches down your leg and around your feet. The tape measure is proud and sophisticated in its work, and you can tell by the effortless way it dances around you that it has done this a thousand times. After it has taken your measurements, the tape drifts over to the shopkeeper who has jotted down all the numbers. She gives you a nod and waddles away into the store cupboard followed by her trusty tape. In mere seconds, she returns with a brand new uniform and wizard robe, handmade to perfection. She passes them to you, and with a flick of her wand, the curtain closes, giving you some privacy. As you try on each new layer, you cannot believe how perfectly crafted this uniform is. Every piece fits snug to your body and provides a warm, glowing comfort. Fully robed now, you check the mirror behind you and see yourself as you were always meant to be. It is a breathtaking moment, one that leaves you speechless. Your magical journey has finally begun. With a renewed excitement, you quickly change back into your day clothes. And when your last shoe is on, the curtain opens of its own accord revealing the happy shopkeeper. You tell her your uniform is a perfect fit, to which she gives you a kind but knowing smile. They're always a perfect fit, she reminds you with a wink. With a flick of her wand, the lady folds your robes neatly and places them in a bag and perfect timing too, as your best friend emerges from round a corner, their new robes in hand. You thank the shopkeeper with a smile, and tell her that you also need to buy some books. She points down to the library below, and tells you to find her when you have everything you need. You and your friend wander back down the stairs and into the vast, maze-like library. You take out your list from your pocket and see that three books are needed for this term. Care of Magical Creatures, Mastering Potions, A Complete Guide, and The Wizard's Book of Charms and Spells. You begin methodically to work your way through the books in alphabetical order. The atmosphere is quiet and peaceful, a nice change from the busy street outside. The air is cool and refreshing, away from the summer sun. You arrive at the letter C, and your eyes scan along the bookshelf. You spot a large red leather-bound book with gold writing. You take it from the shelf, blow away a thin layer of dust, and place care of magical creatures into your bag. The smell of old parchment 
lingers and is utterly enchanting. You find yourself in a calm and tranquil state of mind. This world already feels so natural to you, and you couldn't feel more at home if you tried. Just then, you stumble upon the letter M, and an emerald green book at the top stands out clearly. You shuffle mastering potions off the shelf, and flick through the pages. There are charcoal illustrations of many different potions, and long lists of instructions and all the possible side effects. The pages are delicate, and some have slightly frayed edges. You close the book and place it in your bag as you continue to peruse the shelves in search of your final text. In that moment, your friend appears round the corner and passes you one of the two books in their hand. The book is smooth and black with silver stars and a wand on the cover. You thank your friend and add the wizard's book of charms and spells to your collection. As you emerge from the bookshelves, you see the kind old lady at the front desk. You place two gold and silver coins in her palm, and with uniform and books in hand, you descend once again back into the street. You stroll casually now, your best friend by your side, talking away. You share your stories about how you both arrived here. You tell them about the owl, the black and white cat, and your magical letter that transported you here as a port key. Your friend tells you that their letter was waiting for them this morning, poking through the letterbox, but there was no owl or cat on their journey. Instead, their letter came with a small pouch of powder, which they were told to throw down into their fireplace and speak the name of this enchanting street. Your journey takes you now past a grey and dingy looking shop. In the window are potion bottles full of different coloured liquids pouring back and forth between one another. Cauldrons filled with who knows what stir themselves in a rhythm and bubble away. A gentle steam fills the window, and although the shop is dark, it is enticing. You quietly veer away from the street, up a small ramp, and through the tall, grey door. The air is still here, and filled with a light steam. The shop appears to be completely empty. The only source of light is a small, crackling fire in a stone fireplace above which sits a large grey cauldron, bubbling softly. The flames burn in bright blue, green and red. As your eyes wander, you see statues of gargoyles, 
centaurs, dragons, and other mythical creatures decorating the room. Then, a small trap door in the middle of the room flips open, and a shadowy figure in a black cloak emerges, carrying a handful of strange ingredients and with a thin layer of dust on their shoulders and their brow. The shopkeeper has a slight hunched back and a shuffling walk. They welcome you to their magical apothecary and tell you to browse freely. But they add with a husky laugh not to drink any of the potions on display. This potions master does seem to have a mysterious air about him, but he is not frightening merely eccentric. He seems to enjoy his image as the dark cloaked figure, and perhaps takes the part a little too seriously, but he is kind nonetheless and friendly to you. With a polite smile you turn away and begin to examine the potion equipment and the endless empty cauldrons as you wander along the creaky floorboards. Back at the main desk, the potions master now stirs a pestle and mortar, grinding a small green rock into a fine powder. A silver and emerald dust drifts up into the air, mingled with starlight. Further along the thick wooden shelf, there is a collection of cauldrons, measuring spoons, bottles, and other equipment, all grouped together. It is exactly what you need. In that moment, before you can touch them, the bottles and cauldrons lift slowly into the air. They arch over the top of you, and you both turn to follow their movement. With a mischievous half-smile, the shopkeeper lightly waves his wand and guides your new equipment into a neat pile before wrapping them up in a large box. With the tying of a black ribbon on the top, it is ready. As you pay the potions master, he advises you to both take a trolley for the remainder of your trip. And in that moment, two metal trolleys roll out onto the shop floor by themselves. They wiggle their front wheels as a greeting to you, excited to finally be put to use. You thank the potions master and you both take a trolley and fill it with your robes, books, and your new box on top before opening the door and rolling your trolleys back into the alley. As you make your way down the cobbled street, you check your list and see that you still have to collect your animal and your wand. Your friend walks beside you, pushing their trolley, and you both continue to take in this magical world. Things are less crowded outside now, still busy, but there is a more relaxed feeling in the air. Many wizards have already bought most of their things, and the day has become more leisurely now. You pass by a gaggle of witches selling magical flowers and jewels on a rickety old cart. There is a small wooden stand selling newspapers with moving pictures. 
Then you pass the magical joke shop, painted in a rich orange and filled with an enormous collection of wizarding toys, sweets and fun activities. Multicolored bubbles float from the door and into the sky, and younger children run and jump after them. You share a knowing look with your friend, and agree to visit this exciting shop when you have everything else that you need. Just then, your friend tugs at your arm and points to the large sign opposite. In front of you is a tall, black building with symmetrical windows that curve in a semicircle out onto the street. A soft light illuminates from them. In the exact middle is a jet black door and golden writing sits at the top. The finest wand makers in all the land. Your friend tells you they already have their wand, so they won't be coming in with you. And besides, it's tradition to enter this shop alone. That way, the wand maker can gain a better understanding of who you are and which wand might suit you. This is the part you have been the most nervous for. And now, an excitement builds in you. You leave behind your friend and your trolley, brush yourself down and enter the wand shop. There is a different kind of magic here. You sense it in the air. Instead of wood panelled walls, you are surrounded by long, thin boxes, all of which you assume contain a magic wand. Atop the old rustic writing desk in front of you are two lamps perfectly placed and giving the room a warm orange glow. Behind the desk are many corridors of shelves, again full of long thin boxes. The lids are in many different colours and there is no organisation to be seen. There is no symmetry to the room. All the shelves are at a slight angle, the walls are crooked, and even the floor has a shallow tilt to the right. You walk up to the counter and notice a silver bell freshly polished. Your hand lifts over the bell but just as you are about to press it, you stop, sensing a presence. Out from behind one of the many shelves slides a wiry-haired old wizard on a small wooden stepladder. The wand maker himself. His piercing blue eyes gaze at you curiously but this is not a discomfort. His face is soft and his eyes are kind. The wand maker's presence is exciting. He is silent for a moment before greeting you personally by name. Amazed, your eyes widen. You have no idea how they know who you are. He tells you calmly, it is his business to know who comes in and out of his store. They remember every wand they ever sold, and every wizard they sold them to. 
he asks you to place your hands on his desk face up, and he examines the grooves and curves of your palms and fingers. The wand maker looks at you now, an intriguing glint in his eye. He turns instantly, steps up onto his ladder, and slides off into the endless corridor of boxes. He shuffles a box from the shelf and slides back to his desk. With a delicate hand, he takes off the lid. He folds back a white cloth in the box and lifts out the wand. Hand-carved oak and slightly crooked throughout, with three rings on the handle. He passes it to you over the desk and you take it in anticipation. He tells you to give it a wave. Nothing happens, merely a small poof of a blue spark. The wand maker's face drops in disappointment. He takes back the wand and traces his beard with his hand, his eyes wrinkled in thought. He rubs his finger over his thumb as he ponders his next move. His head slowly lifts as an idea seems to form in his mind. He glances to you with a new smile upon his face. Suddenly he stands bolt upright and comes out from behind the desk collecting a long wooden ladder on the way. He strides past you and heads to a tall one shelf behind. He climbs the ladder slowly, methodically, until he reaches the top shelf. With a last look back to you, he gives himself a nod. He seems to know now exactly what he is looking for. He shuffles out another box, blowing away the dust from the lid. He descends the ladder and with a sigh of relief hands you the box. There is a mysterious and powerful aura about it. The box is decorated in your favourite two colours, with a beautiful swirling pattern on the lid. Your eyes flick up to the wand maker and he urges you to open it. You shuffle off the lid and peel back the thick white cloth, and there you see it, a beautiful handcrafted wand, like nothing you have ever seen before. He tells you this wand was made a long, long time ago, crafted by his great grandfather, but it has, until now, never been opened. You remove the wand and hold it gently in your hand. The moment you touch it, the wand gives off a golden glow, illuminating the entire shop and surrounding you in a warm light. A strange but wonderful sensation runs through your hand up into your arm and across your entire body. The hair 
hairs on the back of your neck stand on end, and you feel a new magic surging through you. You feel as though you could fly, as though you could do anything in this moment. This wand has chosen you. The wand maker places a gentle hand on your shoulder and tells you that in all his years of wand making, he has hardly ever seen a connection this powerful between wand and wizard. He knows just by looking at you that you are destined for great things. He tells you that the kindness in your eyes and in your heart is as clear as the morning, and that with this wand by your side as an ally on your adventures, there isn't anything that you can't achieve. This is a truly beautiful moment, one that will stay with you forever. The light from your wand dims now, and you look at it in your hand, taking in its wonder and beauty, before slipping it into your pocket. The final piece of the puzzle has been found. You pay the kind old wand maker with a beaming smile before leaving this enchanted shop and heading back out into the street. It is quiet now and the street is nearly empty, but there is still the odd wizard meandering down the cobbles and nipping in and out of the many shops. A golden red light descends into the alley now. A beautiful late summer sunset illuminates the shop windows on this crooked cobbled street. Straight ahead of you waits your best friend, a mischievous smile on their face. While you were inside, they have been to the pet shop and have brought you a magical gift. They reveal a cage from behind their back and inside is your favorite animal looking up at you with hopeful eyes. Your friend opens the cage and you take your new animal in your arms, holding them gently. They curl up in your warm embrace and make themselves comfortable in your arms. They are beautiful and precious. You look to your friend with a grateful smile and thank them for this perfect gift. You place your new companion back into their cage and you set off on your way. As you stroll together now, you ask where to next and with a cheeky smile your friend points down the lane to the orange fronted store that appears to be glowing in the street. At last, the joke shop. You peer in through the square panelled window and you cannot believe the array of magical toys, sweets and activities going on inside. Your patience disappears as you both push open the door and pile your trolleys 
into a small cloakroom to your left. Then you walk out onto the shop floor. All around you are tall shelves of different colours, filled with a seemingly infinite collection of magical sweets, cookies and toys. Frogs made of chocolate occupy an entire shelf to themselves. There are small boxes of jelly beans in all the colours of the rainbow, and red and black ones made from licorice. You spy a makeshift cauldron with a suspicious green goo inside, bubbling away and stirring by itself. You have no idea what it is, a prank most likely, but you dare not touch it to find out. The shop is filled with many wizards, but the atmosphere is perfect. A gentle hustle and bustle fills the air, and everywhere you look are happy, smiling faces, enjoying every moment in this magical place. The floor is soft under your feet and springy to walk on, and it makes you feel light and airy. With every step you take, the floor releases tiny multicoloured bubbles that rise up to the ceiling before popping on the roof. And as your eyes lift up, the open plan room reveals that there is an upstairs platform with many more magical gifts. There is a fountain of falling sweets in the middle of the store, where you see young wizards holding out extendable paper cups and filling them all the way to the top. To your left is an old-fashioned carnival-style sweet machine, decorated in yellow and red stripes, with a silver switch in the middle. Four panels of glass show that inside are small pieces of chocolate spinning on a turnstile inside the machine. In the top of the machine is a tiny dragon with bright blue scales on its body. As the balls of chocolate turn, the dragon lets out a few blasts of fire warming them through. You watch a small young wizard run over to the machine, and turning the silver switch, a warm chocolate sweet drops out into their hand. They pass the chocolate between their hands to cool it down, before popping it neatly in their mouth. Just behind you, you overhear a trio of talking wizards. They mention a secret room upstairs, in which there is a magical levitation chamber. You tap your best friend on the shoulder and gesture upstairs, telling them what you have heard. Their eyes widen with excitement and you both work your way through the crowd and toward a thin, spiral staircase. As you walk onto the first step, the staircase begins to move in a slow circle, and you are carried upstairs. As you slowly rise up, you look out over the huge joke shop, taking in all the wonderful goings-on and the enchanting atmosphere 
inside. When you reach the top, the staircase stops at the perfect moment and you move off onto the top walkway. Your friend follows just behind and you take them by the arm and lead them along the walkway with an excitement in your stomach. In front of you now stands the curtained off secret room. You check the coast is clear, pull back the curtain and rush inside. The dark room is lit by more floating bubbles, similar to the ones below, only these do not pop. Instead, they give off a soft, bluey purple light and float effortlessly around the room. In the middle of the room is the levitation chamber. It is a huge dome shape, big enough for three or four people, and you and your friend step inside together. You press a green button on the chamber door and it begins to give off an enchanting sound. It feels almost space-like. Instantly, you feel yourself being lifted. You gently push off from the ground and feel that you are now floating inside the chamber. The purple-blue light echoes round the room as you watch specks of silver drift up from the floor and surround you in a magical stardust. You both drift around the chamber, laughing together and pulling funny poses in mid-air. You feel eternally grateful for your best friend. And then a deep relaxation begins to run through your body and you allow yourself to become one with the chamber, floating in complete peace. You feel any tension releasing from your muscles. Each part of you, bit by bit, is becoming more and more relaxed as you gently drift inside the starlight dome. You have never felt so relaxed in all your life. Any remaining thoughts leave your mind and disappear into the starlight. You allow yourself to let go of everything. Your arms hang loose by your side, free from all tension. You feel your legs soften and any holding in the muscles completely melts away. Your back and shoulders become loose and soft and you feel your chest and stomach slowly expand with each calming breath.
every muscle in your face releases tension now. Your brows soften, your cheeks and jaw become loose, and your mouth drifts open, relaxed. You are completely free. You feel grateful for this wonderful experience and grateful for your best friend who is by your side on this magical adventure. Nothing else matters but this moment. This is a wonderful place full of hope, of possibility, and of endless magic. As you begin to drift back to the floor, you feel a new sense of peace inside you now. The specks of stardust begin to fade and you are slowly lowered back to the ground, safe and sound. Before you leave the chamber, you and your friend share a warm embrace thanking each other for being a part of your lives and sharing an excitement for the adventures that await you. You wander out of the room together, back onto the walkway before descending on the spiral staircase, gazing out over the still busy shop floor. You meander through the many wizards still browsing, collect your trolleys and leave the joke shop, an unstoppable grin on your face. You enter the now dark street and the moon hangs high above you, a white pearl beaming down. One or two stars begin to pepper the sky, and tall lampposts provide a scattered collection of orange spotlights down the street. You look to your friend with a smile and decide it is time for some supper, although your smile quickly fades when you both realize you don't know where to go. As if in answer to a prayer, you feel a brushing against your legs. And there is your old friend, the black and white cat, here to guide you one final time today. You bend down and stroke your furry companion in thanks, and they roll over on their back accepting a few loving strokes on their tummy. Then they roll back onto all fours and begin to snake their way down the street as you follow behind. As you walk, you check the contents of your trolley and see that everything is in perfect order. You squeeze a finger through the cage of your animal and give them a loving tickle under the chin as they sniff your hand affectionately. Your new companion, who is now to share this magical adventure with you. 
On each side of you, you watch the many lights of the shop windows slowly go out one by one as the owners settle in for the night. You look up into the deep black night and the stars are slowly orbiting directly above you, pulsing gently. They provide a powerful enchantment, protecting this sacred, magical world. Before long, you come to a small brick building with a thatched roof, tucked quietly away in the corner of the street. A warm light flows from the window and a black sign in the shape of a cauldron swings above you. The black and white cat climbs up the shallow ramp leading to the door and turns back to face you. This is the place. With a gentle scratch on their head, you thank the cat for all their help today. They purr softly and give your hand an affectionate lick before slipping off into the night. You turn back just as your best friend opens the door and you both head inside. You are met with a blast of heat and the sound of a crackling fire which you see in the middle of the tavern, nestled in a stone fire pit, warming the entire room. Over the fire rests a large cauldron with a fresh, hot stew bubbling away. A musician sits in one corner, playing a gentle tune. The tavern holds a warm and pleasant atmosphere, with a handful of wizards lingering at the bar, or sitting in small groups at wooden trestle tables. The smell from the cooking pot is delicious, and coupled with the aroma of butterscotch beer, you are lured deeper into the tavern as you and your friend find a table. In that moment, you see a barman approach, slightly grubby looking, but friendly enough. He has a towel over his shoulder and a small apron round his waist. You ask if you can both rent a room, and with a twinkle in his eye, he tells you you are lucky. There are only two rooms left. You pay the barman at once, and he hands you both a key with your room numbers, offering to have your luggage taken upstairs. You thank him with a smile, as you and your friend each take your animal from their cage and place them next to you, before the rest of your luggage is taken away up to your rooms. As your eyes wander round the tavern, you notice chairs stacking themselves at empty tables. Pots, tankards and glasses in the kitchen are being washed in mid-air by scrubbing brushes, all circling in the same rhythm. One wizard sits at the bar in a tall pointy hat, reading a newspaper in mid-air and enjoying a slice of bread and cheese as the spoon in their soup stirs of its own accord. There is a small bucket bobbing through the air, filled with hot soapy water 
and a clean rag, drifting from table to table and wiping them down. You realize just how much you love magic. Just then, the barman returns, carrying a tray. On the tray are two glass tankards, filled with a rich orange liquid and a thick foam topping. These drinks lift themselves off the tray and land on the table, one for each of you. The barman places down two empty bowls and spoons, and you watch wide-eyed as you see a giant ladle lift out of the middle cauldron and float over to your table. Any drops of stew are being caught by a small hand towel diligently following underneath the ladle. In two slow motions, the ladle fills your friend's bowl and then your own. The rich, creamy liquid gives off a tantalizing smell and a warm steam rises from it. Two pieces of freshly baked bread slice themselves from a warm loaf brought by the barman. All of this is on the house, the barman tells you. A welcome gift for two exciting new wizards. You thank him kindly and he leaves you to enjoy your stay. A small candle in the middle of your table flickers gently and dances in the wind when the door swings open and more wizards enter the tavern. You take in the quirky yet magical surroundings as you enjoy the first mouthful of this delicious food. There is a warm sensation in your stomach and you feel a homely comfort surging through you. The butterscotch beer is refreshing, cleansing your palate and relaxing you deeper. As you continue to eat, you stroke your animal next to you, who is now awake and nibbling small pieces of bread that you break off for them. You talk happily with your friend about your day, reminiscing on all the wonderful places you have been. Then you begin to share your dreams and aspirations for when you get to the castle and for your life as a wizard. You feel truly blessed to have them by your side. You cannot imagine taking this journey with anyone else. The sound of the fire and the calming atmosphere lulls you into a deep relaxation and you feel your eyes begin to drift closed. You reach into your pocket and check your train ticket. 11 o'clock tomorrow morning at King's Cross Station. You and your friend decide now that it is time to get some sleep. You have another busy day ahead of you. Tomorrow, you will take the journey aboard the Hogwarts Express to begin your adventure as a wizard. 
ready to study at the most magical castle in the world. With your animal cage in hand, you thank the barman and wander up the creaky wooden stairs, followed by your best friend. On the wall next to you are moving portraits of all the previous owners of this historic tavern. In one picture, a large plump wizard is cooking over a huge pot and hosting a merry gathering. In the next, a young witch is waving her wand as a pile of vegetables chop themselves into a pan. Another portrait shows two old ladies with curly hair preparing a meal and laughing together. There are almost too many pictures to count, each one celebrating a new generation of the tavern. Finally, when you reach the top of the stairs, you see a moving photograph of the current owner and barman, washing tankards by hand and smiling to the camera. At the top of the landing, you bid your friend a good night and wander down the slanted corridor. You are not sure if your eyes will keep open much longer. And then, at last, you reach a small wooden framed door with your room number on it. You slide in the key, unlock the door, and push it open. A small fire burns quietly in the corner, keeping your room a perfect temperature. Thick wooden beams cross above you, crooked but strong, and a white window sits at the far side of the room. Your bags and cases are all lined up in perfect order, ready for your journey tomorrow. You empty your pockets, place the letter and the ticket on your bedside table and dim the oil lantern nearby so as to leave a soft yellow light gently glowing in the corner. You place your animal on your luggage and offer them another mouthful of bread before giving them a stroke under their chin as they settle down to sleep. Outside the small window you spot the white moon high in the sky. A shooting star of bright silver arches over the moon and blazes across the night. You walk heavily to your large, soft bed with a huge white mattress and flop down onto it. It is like falling into a thick, fluffy cloud. The duvet wraps perfectly around you and you sink ever so slightly down into the mattress. The pillow fits to your head and your whole body is supported and comfortable. As you lie there now, you begin to replay all the wonderful events of the day in your memory. And you remind yourself how lucky you are 
to have experienced all these magical things today. After what feels like a lifetime of waiting, you finally received your letter. And tomorrow you embark on the greatest adventure of your life. Your journey to Hogwarts. Your mind drifts deeper and deeper into relaxation and comfort. And your body is completely free. There is a new calmness and a new confidence within you now. You can do whatever you set your mind to. As the fire burns gently, keeping you warm and comfortable, you give yourself permission to let go now. You can rest easy, and when you wake in the morning, adventure awaits. You are safe. You are warm, you are protected. The wizarding world will guide your dreams tonight and you are well looked after here. You wake up in an unfamiliar but very comfortable four-poster bed. The sound of a crackling fire soothes your morning fatigue. The soft pillow and thick duvet have an enchanting warmth, one that makes you want to stay in bed forever. The entire room is framed on a very slight angle, with crooked walls and an uneven floor. On your left, a thin blue curtain is parted ever so slightly, and on the wood-panelled wall opposite, there is a long slit of light, with beads of dust dancing in the golden glow. The white plaster ceiling above you is full of hairline cracks, and as you rest here, tracing the jagged lines above you, you begin to remember the magical day you had only yesterday, and you start to piece together the puzzle. You recall how a mysterious letter was delivered by an owl, and as you opened it, the letter transported you to a dark passageway in the heart of London, where you were guided by a beautiful black and white cat. Finally, you emerged through an enchanted door into a magical alley full of witches and wizards just like you. You delved into the tunnels of the Great Goblin Bank and found your new wizarding money inside a hidden vault deep underground. Waiting for you outside the bank was your best friend who had also received a letter and who will join you on this magical adventure. Together, you collected your robes and uniforms, purchased your books and potions equipment, and finally received the most precious gift of all, your magic wand. You recall being lost in the alley last night, but your trusty companion, the black and white cat, brought you here to this magical tavern for a warm wizard's supper and a soft bed 
for a perfect night's sleep. And now, today, you will board the enchanted train and journey to a beautiful, wondrous castle, hidden from the non-magical world, ready to begin your training. With a flutter in your heart, thinking of the day ahead, you climb out of bed and walk over to your many cases, stacked neatly against the far wall. On top of your cases sits a wonderful enchanted animal, fast asleep in their cage. A gift given to you by your best friend. You take a moment to open the cage and give them a good morning tickle under their chin. They sleepily sniff your hand and curl up once again, desperate for just a few minutes more. You open a brown paper shopping bag and take out your uniform and your robe. An unstoppable excitement is bubbling in your stomach now. And before you know it, you are pulling on your new uniform as quickly as you can. You take a moment to look at yourself in the crooked, dusty mirror hanging on the wall. You are fully robed, looking wonderfully smart and ready for your adventure into magic. Perched on a table to your right is a small rectangular box. Your eyes are drawn to it and to the enchanting pulse it gives off. You take the box in your hand, slip off the lid and fold back the thin piece of silk. With a deep breath, you gently remove your wand and hold it tight in your hand. Suddenly, it all makes sense. This wand is the final piece of the puzzle, the one thing that makes all of this real. Only those who hold magic within them are destined to carry one of these. And this wand is yours. It chose you. Just then, there is a knock at your bedroom door. You have a funny feeling who it might be, and you open it with an eager smile. Standing in front of you, also fully robed, is your best friend. They greet you with an excited chuckle and an impatient shuffle in their feet. One hand carries their animal in their cage and the other holds their wand. They lift up the wand in front of their face, showing it off to you with a wide smile before slipping it back into their pocket. As you turn and collect your animal, you whisper to them that it is time for breakfast. Instantly, their eyes pop open and look around excitedly. You cannot help but laugh at their innocence and empathize with their morning hunger. You close the door behind you and your friend leads the way down the crooked wooden stairs, slowly revealing the now familiar tavern from last night. The delicious smell of a hot breakfast circles the room and a delicate steam drifts above the trestle tables. A large stone fire pit crackles away in the middle of the tavern, 
keeping the whole room at a perfect warmth. Oil lanterns and floating candles are dotted around the tavern. A carved and crooked oak chandelier sways gently over the room, and soft yellow lights give off a comforting golden glow. There are many drowsy witches and wizards enjoying a hearty breakfast and fresh morning coffee, but the atmosphere is subdued, quiet and calm. One or two chairs are unstacking themselves from atop the tables. They turn themselves upright and slot perfectly into place without the help of a single human hand. Perched in the corner is a pink-haired witch with a newspaper floating in front of her. The pages turn independently and the picture on the front moves like a short video on repeat. Her coffee stirs by itself as she reads the daily news of this magical world. After waiting patiently at the bottom of the steps, the friendly barman greets you. You remember his grubby nose from last night and you wonder if the poor fellow ever gets a day off. You and your friend each pay a sickle, and with a warm smile, he guides you to a low wooden table, advising you he will be right back before dashing off into his kitchen, a small red and white towel over his shoulder. At that moment, a white cloth and metal bucket float over to you and begin to wipe down the table without spilling a single drop of water. The precision and detail of their work is remarkable. The cloth wrings itself out over the bucket and wipes down the table again this time drying it off. As you rest your arms on the wood, it is clean, fresh and warm to the touch. You cannot help but think just how wonderful magic really is. The barman returns now with two copper coffee pots and places them down on the table. Inside, he tells you, is their famous wizard's brew, a recipe crafted by the very first owner of this tavern and has been passed on for generations. The wizard's brew takes the taste of whatever drink you are craving the most, and if you wish, you can even change flavors halfway through. In that moment, two small plates float over to your table, topped with a hot, steaming pastry, freshly baked. This, the barman tells you, is another delicacy of the tavern, one of his own inventions. One small pastry can fill the stomach for hours, giving off a comfortable warmth that runs through your body for the entire day. From behind his back now, the barman reveals two small metal bowls full of multicolored dried food. The perfect breakfast, he says, for your magical animals. You and your friend take your companions from their cage and place them next to you on your bench, the silver bowls in front of them. With a wiggle of excitement, 
they tuck in and begin to enjoy their enchanted breakfast. The pot of wizard's brew rises from the table and pours into a small cup in front of you. The rich, hot, golden liquid falls almost in slow motion and a thin steam lifts from the rim. As the brew begins to whirlpool in your cup, you take your first sip. In that moment, you taste the drink you are most craving for, and instantly a beautiful, tingling sensation begins to pulse from the top of your head, through your body, and all the way to the tips of your fingers and your toes. With a few bites of this delicious pastry, there is a new warmth in your stomach. It is like a mini fire with the embers glowing steadily, providing a wonderful heat that will fuel you for the whole day. Your friend gives you a smile and you share your thoughts for the journey ahead and the feeling of finally arriving at the castle tonight. Just then, you feel a soft brushing against your leg, but when you look under the table, nothing is there. Suddenly, you hear your friend laughing above you, and as you lift your head back up, you are met by the delicate face of your old companion, the black and white cat, looking into your eyes with a knowing mischief. Your furry friend has come to see you off today and make sure that you get on your way safely. With a full heart, you give them a gentle stroke on their head as they settle on your lap and curl up in a perfect circle, purring softly. You get the impression that they would love to come with you, but you know that their duty is here, for they are one of the many guardians of this magical alley. Still, you know that whenever you want to come back to this place, they will always be here, waiting for your return. You take a moment to enjoy this beautiful atmosphere, the sound of your purring companion, your happy and hungry animal devouring their breakfast, and your very best friend sitting opposite you. As you finish your pastry and the last drop of your wizard's brew, the barman approaches and, in a whisper, asks you to follow him, for he has something to show the both of you. The black and white cat sits up and leads the way behind the barman. You feel a new comfort and confidence with this cat guiding you once again. And you know undoubtedly that you have made a friend for life. The barman leads you down a hidden grey corridor, peppered with dim torchlight. The corridor turns a sharp right, then left, left again, and then right. You walk straight now at a steady pace, but before the end of the next corridor, the barman stops, turning to face a single red brick on your left. 
he pushes the brick slowly into the wall. Then the bricks begin to fold apart and create a small art doorway. A blue light pulses from the entrance and a wonderful magic radiates from inside the room. One by one, you walk through the door into a small wooden room. Huge white blankets cover old chairs and bits of furniture. There are broken tables, chandeliers, and old used tankards scattered around the room. Opposite you, looking very out of place in this crooked, dusty room, is a pure white marble fireplace. But there is no fire burning. Instead, the floor of the fireplace glows in a dark blue and pulses with light. Much of the light, however, is blocked by a large silhouette. A shadow in the shape of a huge man. As the shadow steps to one side, the light reveals his face, and you see it is not a man at all, but a giant. A giant easily ten feet tall with the bushiest, blackest beard you ever saw, and shaggy black hair down to his shoulders. He wears a thick brown coat and heavy boots with brass buckles. For a giant, he has the friendliest face you have ever seen. An inexplicable warmth radiates from him one that makes you feel calm and safe. He lets out a low chuckle and gently picks up the black and white cat who curls up in his arms, giving off a rich, satisfied purr. With the cat in one arm, this gentle giant holds out his other hand introducing himself. He is the gamekeeper, he tells you, and professor of magical creatures. He has been sent by the headmaster to provide you with safe passage to King's Cross. His enormous palm and fingers wrap around both your hand and your friends, and as he shakes, you feel yourself almost being lifted from the ground. Your smile fades to confusion for a moment, and you ask the giant why you had to be brought all this way to an old hidden room just to meet him. With a twinkle in his eye, he tells you that this is no ordinary room. In here, there is a secret portal a gateway that will take you directly to King's Cross Station, and he points a large finger at the white marble fireplace. At that moment, the barman takes out a small green pouch tied up with string. Flu powder, he tells you, a magical means of transportation. Your best friend turns to you excitedly, reminding you that only yesterday they used flu powder to travel here. They assure you that it is perfectly safe, and in fact, very fun. All you have to do, the giant explains, is take a pinch of powder in your hand, step into the fireplace, and speak the name of your destination as you throw down the powder. Then, as if to bid you farewell, the black and white cat 
leaps from the giant's arms and runs over to you, circling your legs and brushing against you. Suddenly, they roll onto their back, demanding a belly rub. You kneel down and gently stroke their tummy as they continue to purr. You will be back soon, you tell them, and you can't wait to see them again. They brush their head against your hand and offer one or two affectionate licks. And as you stand up, your furry companion leaps up onto a stool next to you, patiently waiting to see you off. Your friend stops for a moment, reminding the barman that all your luggage is still in your room. With a knowing smile, he whips off one of the white blankets to reveal both of your trolleys, perfectly packed with all of your bags, ready to go. You walk over to your luggage and place your animal cage on the very top. Their eyes roam around this enchanting room with a curious glow. Your best friend offers to go first so you can see how it works. The giant tells you he will follow up behind the both of you, bringing your luggage with him. The barman opens the pouch and you watch your best friend pull out a small fist of powder. They step into the large fireplace, the dark blue light illuminating their smile. Then they speak the words King's Cross Station and they throw down the powder. Instantly, the blue light erupts into a rich green, covering your friend and filling the room with an emerald shimmer. As the light slowly turns back to blue and fades once again, you see the fireplace is empty. Your friend awaits you now at King's Cross. The giant places a reassuring hand on your shoulder, but you are not nervous anymore. You are filled with wonder and excitement. You walk up to the barman, taking a fistful of powder from the pouch. It is the texture of damp sand, clumpy and cold, but soft to the touch. You step into the bubbling blue fireplace, your heart beating in anticipation. You take a deep breath, and with one last look at your new friends, you speak the words, King's Cross Station, and throw down the powder. Suddenly, you are engulfed in an emerald green light and you feel a pulsing sensation throughout your body, a rippling vibration. There is the sensation of floating through the air and you feel the warmth of the sun beaming over your face. It's as if you are sitting atop a cloud, floating through a magical sky, backed by an emerald sunrise. You can feel yourself passing through different places now, and occasional images flash by. You see the big red London buses, the black taxis, and Millennium Bridge. You pass over Leicester Square, Big Ben, and the London Eye. 
and just then, a soft white light begins to lift over your eyes. Your feet land on a hard concrete floor, and slowly the world comes into focus again. Your eyes and ears awaken to the sight and sound of a busy train station. The hustle and bustle of ordinary life ticks away and the muffled tannoy echoes across the station. Your best friend stands in front of you and you share an unstoppable grin. You step out into King's Cross Station. You can hardly believe it. Behind you is a small alcove of white brick, and you watch the last light of emerald disappear into the floor. In the next moment, you see the alcove expand in size bigger and bigger, until at last the giant appears. You see the bushy beard first, followed by his huge shoulders and enormous feet. He steps out of the emerald light, pushing two trolleys, with two very flustered animals perched on top. You check around to see if anyone has noticed, but the muggle world continues on, unaware and oblivious. Unlike you, they are blind to the magic. Your friendly giant points a huge finger down the station, toward platforms 9 and 10 and you follow behind his heavy footsteps through the now busy station. There is something warm and comforting about the giant's presence. He is uncommonly kind, and you feel safe and protected with him guiding your way. He turns to give you a cheeky smile with an excited twinkle in his eye. He carries a large umbrella and uses it now almost as a walking stick. Many of the muggles have noticed the giant now and very carefully navigate around him at a distance. They give a confused, jaw-dropping stare and he responds by mimicking their silly expressions right back at them. You cannot help but laugh at this gentle giant. The station is formed of tall archways of grey brick, with blue and white metal signs at each platform. The walls tower high up to the ceiling, and the early morning sun reflects on the glass-domed roof. The buzz of rush hour whizzes through the air, with restless passengers fidgeting on the platform as many trains are pulling into the station. It is incredible to think that all these ordinary folk are completely unaware of the beautiful boundless magic that you have in your life. You arrive at a thick brick archway, planted firmly between platforms 9 and 10. The gentle giant stops and turns to you. This is it, he says, another magical gateway. Only this one takes you directly to the enchanted platform of nine and three quarters, 
where you will find the magical express waiting for you. He pulls out a silver pocket watch and flicks it open. You have plenty of time yet before the train leaves, he reassures you. Plenty of time. Then, suddenly, he gasps, asking if you have your tickets. In perfect timing, you and your friend both remove the paper tickets from your pocket, holding them up with a proud smile. The gentle giant chuckles to himself with a sigh of relief, admitting sheepishly that he can be a bit of a worrier. To pass through this gateway, he adds, all you have to do is run at the pillar between nine and ten. To your disappointment, the giant tells you he won't be coming with you on the train. He has business to attend to at the school. But rest assured, he will be seeing you later this evening. He rummages in the bag over his shoulder and produces two hardback books and hands one to each of you. The History of Magic. These should give you a bit of a head start, he adds with a mischievous wink. You cannot resist the urge to throw yourself at the giant into a huge, warm embrace. He lifts both of you into the air with a chuckle and places you gently back down again. Be off now, he adds with a loving tear in his eye and a quiet sniff. He hates goodbyes, he tells you, but you promise to see him soon, and he nods affectionately. You place your new book inside your top case, and stand facing the pillar. You are ready. You hold your trolley with confidence, and with a bubbling excitement, you run straight towards the brick archway. Suddenly, a darkness washes over you, and the sounds of King's Cross begin to fade. You feel a tingling sensation running through your body, from the top of your head to the very tips of your toes. The darkness morphs into white and gold, and a pulsing pale light forms around you. It begins to fade slowly as your eyes adjust once more, revealing a magical train station, packed full of witches and wizards, and hidden from the muggle world. The station is arched with cream-coloured brick in smooth formation and peppered with a silver stardust that floats through the air. And there, through a thin mist, you see it. A black-fronted steam engine coupled with a deep crimson and contoured with glistening gold. Behind the engine, a perfect line of crimson and gold carriages continue deep into the tunnel beyond. The chimney puffs out steam of marshmallow white, as thick as a spring cloud. It covers the wheels of the train, giving the impression that this majestic engine is floating above the ground. On the front of the engine is a red sign, arched ever so slightly, decorated with gold writing. The Hogwarts Express. 
you have dreamt of this day for as long as you remember, and now you are finally coming home. With a tap on your shoulder, you turn to see your best friend's smiling face, a happy tear in their eye. You put your arms around one another and savor this beautiful moment. With your best friend in tow, you push your trolleys through the lively crowd. You can feel a powerful magic swelling in the air around you. Your feet feel as though they barely touch the floor, and you get the sensation that you are gliding along the platform. Wizards and witches are sweeping past you in all directions. Some wear the colors of their house. Others, like you, wear a black tie and have yet to meet the sorting hat. Further along the station, on your right, is a handful of wooden stalls. Some stalls are selling sweets or second-hand books or last-minute odds and ends for school. Suddenly, you hear a whistle in the distance. It is time to board the train. At that moment, a friendly-looking conductor approaches, wearing a thick white moustache, a plump belly, and a scarlet uniform lined with gold. He offers you a helping hand with all of your luggage. With a thankful smile, you keep your suitcase and your animal cage and hand over the rest of your luggage. Your jaw drops in amazement as the conductor twirls their wand above their head, effortlessly lifting up your remaining luggage. On the side of the carriage, a large door of deep red flips open, revealing a hidden compartment filled with many cases already. One by one, your luggage floats in neat formation and stacks itself carefully in line with the rest, shuffling into place, and the heavy door falls closed with a delicate click. You and your friend thank the conductor, who gives you a low bow and a smile. Free now from your heavy trolley, you make your way towards one of the many carriages and climb the sturdy iron steps, your suitcase and animal in one hand each. The carriage is filled with a bustling atmosphere. Witches and wizards are chattering away in the corridor, with many searching for an empty compartment. Your friend leads the way as you walk down the narrow corridor, painted in eggshell white and lit by soft yellow lamps finished with a rich blue carpet. Through the large windows on your left, you peer inside the cosy compartments. Many are full of happy, smiling wizards talking away. They give you a wave as you wander past, and you return a slightly nervous smile but already you feel so welcome here, and a sense of belonging surges through you. Just then, there is a vibration under your feet, 
and the carriage seems to expand from the inside. You feel yourself sway gently back and forth as right before your eyes is revealed an empty compartment waiting for you. Your friend turns to you excitedly and slides open the door as you both step inside. You are met with a soothing fresh air and it is the perfect temperature. The carpet beneath your feet is soft and thick. There are two long seats facing each other, topped with blue and white cushions on the base and the back. Opposite is a huge flat window looking out onto the other side of the platform where you see a short walkway through the tunnel. There is an old Victorian lamp hanging from the wall above the window and a golden light echoes from it. You place your suitcase and your animal next to you as you take a seat opposite your best friend. As you unlock the cage, instantly your animal moves onto your lap, curling up in complete comfort. You feel so lucky to have this new companion with you on your adventure. Through the door of your compartment and out of the far window, you can see onto the main platform. The white moustached conductor is waving down to the main engine now, and the platform is completely empty. And then you hear it. The train wakes up as the engine puffs into life. You feel a rumble under your feet and through your body as the heavy wheels start to turn and you feel yourself moving now, slow and steady at first, but soon your pace quickens as the crimson steam train powers on into the tunnel ahead. Your magical journey has begun. For the moment there is darkness at the window as the train journeys on through the long sweeping tunnel. The repetitive sound of the wheels chugging away lulls you deeper into a calm and relaxed state. The carriage is illuminated by the lamp above you and specks of gold dust dance through the air. The atmosphere in the carriage is quiet and peaceful. There is a comfort in the unfaltering rhythm of the train. It is strong and safe. In the next moment, there is a tap on the window of your compartment and the familiar plump conductor gives you a smile as he slides open the door. He clicks his golden hole punch between his thumb and finger and asks to check your tickets. You reach into your pocket, pull out the thick paper ticket and hand it over. With a twist of his moustache, the conductor lets out a satisfied chuckle that wobbles his protruding belly and he punches a hole in both of your tickets. He bows his head and backs out of the compartment, throwing your tickets up into the air. Your ticket takes the shape of a small bird and flutters down into your lap. 
the smiling conductor wishes you both a magical and peaceful journey as they slide the door closed and shuffle off down the corridor. Just then, a beautiful light illuminates the carriage, and for a brief second, you squint at the sudden exposure. As your eyes adjust, they are met by a majestic countryside, like nothing you have ever seen before. The grass is pure emerald, and the curved horizon of hills creates a dark silhouette in the distance, dividing the land perfectly with the rich sapphire sky. Enormous trees are dotted across the landscape, with flocks of birds swooping around the branches. The birds ascend high into the sky in a cluster, creating fleeting patterns in the air, before drifting back down to their many nests among the old oaks of this earth. This land is so enchanting, so full of magic, that you can almost see the wind itself swirling in white lines and carrying the odd leaf on a looping journey through the trees. In the small hedgerows nearby, you see families of rabbits huddling together or sprinting across the landscape. Above them, collections of butterflies seem to be following and they create their own colourful displays below the tree line. Occasionally, deer emerge in small herds atop the golden peaked hillsides, grazing happily and helping their young fawns take their very first steps in this world. One or two stacks leap across the landscape, creating majestic silhouettes above the horizon, a picture you will never forget. It is clear to see that all the beautiful facets of nature have become one in this countryside paradise. Suddenly, there is another knock on the inside window, and the door slides open. A squat elderly witch peeps her head over the top of her enormous trolley that is packed full of magical treats. She asks politely if you would like anything from the trolley. Your jaw drops in amazement at the sight in front of you. Some of the sweets you recognize, the famous chocolate frogs, jelly beans in every flavor imaginable, licorice wands and sugar quills. You spot gummy snakes in purple and green that wiggle from one corner of the trolley. There are candied Catherine wheels that give off a colourful fizz as they whirl round, glowing in bright red, yellow and blue. Twirling toffee wraps around itself, pretzel-like, and the more it twirls, the softer and more decadent it becomes. The elderly witch informs you that the napping nougat is a popular new treat and would be perfect for a long journey. It's not too sweet, but has a blend of wonderful flavors, 
and when eaten will take you into a deep, peaceful nap. You share a wide-eyed smile with your friend and you pull out a few sickles each. You buy yourselves a napping nougat and anything else that catches your eye on this magical trolley. With your very generous pile of treats, the old lady gives you a gentle smile and slides the door shut. You put the napping nougat to one side for now and begin to tuck in to the rest of your snacks. Some of them remind you of your favorite sweets from the muggle world, but others are so unique, so enchanted, that there is quite simply nothing else like it. As you work your way through your mini feast, you begin to confide in your best friend about what you think the castle might look like. What kind of food will be served at the famous feasts? And how you both feel about finally starting your journey as a wizard. You wonder if there might be any hidden passageways or mysterious secrets locked away in this ancient, bewitching castle. The conversation turns to the sorting ceremony tonight, and you imagine which of the four wizarding houses might suit you best. There is the house of the red and gold lion, recognized for their bravery and passion. The house of the yellow and black badger, admired for their patience, hard work, and loyalty. The house of the blue and bronze eagle, who pride themselves on academia, wit, and forward thinking. And finally, the house of the silver and emerald serpent, where ambition, diligence, and creativity are of the utmost importance. You allow yourself a moment to really imagine what it might be like and how it would feel to be sorted into your favorite wizarding house. Your friend smiles at you deep in thought as if to know what you are thinking and they reassure you that no matter where you are sorted then that house will have gained a wonderful new wizard. You thank them with a sigh of relief, and you are filled with an immense gratitude for this brilliant person opposite you. You cannot imagine taking this journey without them. You sit now in a peaceful silence, enjoying the company of your best friend and gazing out the window across the rolling green hills, now backed by a late afternoon sun. Your animal has fallen fast asleep and you stroke their head gently as they curl up on your knees. Your thoughts turn to the gentle giant and his comforting, warm presence. You look forward to seeing him tonight and wonder if he might take you on any adventures through the castle. The book he gave you, A History of Magic, rests on your suitcase. You open it and flick through the pages. You notice a thin piece of parchment sticking out like a bookmark. You fold to the marked page and reveal a chapter titled 
the guardian of Hogwarts. There is a note on the loose parchment written in charcoal pencil with unjoined writing. The note reads, My dear old friend Norbert, with a smiley face drawn at the end. Before you can read the chapter, you hear a deep, booming echo outside, a great animal calling out. Outside the window is a solitary mountain peak. Circling the mountain, you see huge arched wings propelling a snake-like body of brown and emerald. It has a long, swishing tail braided with small spikes. You stare without blinking in complete amazement. A dragon. You have only ever heard of these creatures in fairy tales. Can it really be true? You check the book and see a beautiful watercolour painting of this dragon. A dark brown body with hints of emerald in its scales. As you read on, the book reveals that this dragon hatched on the school grounds and was cared for in early life by the giant gamekeeper of the castle. This dragon, Norbert, was taken to Romania to live with his own kind. But years later, at the request of the headmaster, Norbert and his new family returned to the school, and he became the guardian of this magical land, watching down from the peak of the mountain, protecting the school, the train, and all who dwell within. As the dragon spots the train, you hear another call echo over the mountain, and three more dragons appear, almost out of thin air. The group descends down the side of the mountain and towards the rolling train. As the family of dragons gets closer, you recognize Norbert immediately and he gives a low, swooping display of prowess and elegance. A second dragon of similar size, but the color of pure sapphire, joins in with the display, and the two dragons swirl together in the sky, creating a breathtaking spectacle. As they turn and dance, a cloud of gold dust falls from their wings and drifts across the landscape in a soft glitter. Then, from further behind, appear two baby dragons both a wonderful blend of emerald and sapphire, and barely a year old. They are still learning how to use their wings, and they swoop from side to side, trying to catch the wind. One of the baby dragons lets out a hiccup and a cough, coupled with a small burst of orange fire, their innocence and their beauty overwhelms you, and you feel a sudden, deep affection for these rare, magical creatures. Norbert and his partner soar majestically over the land, 
and the two babies beat their wings as fast as they can, trying to keep up. Against the low sun, the sapphire dragon illuminates in a flourish of blue that beams down onto the rich green hills. These dragons are here to protect you and will watch over you in your life as a wizard. As the dragon's display comes to an end, this precious family begins to soar back up into the sky. The little ones are now perched on their parents' back, riding one each. They soar higher and higher, until at last they catch the wind above and begin to glide back over to their mountain refuge. A sense of peace and complete tranquility is flowing through you now. You have witnessed something unforgettable and utterly magical. This is a memory that will stay with you forever. The train passes through a small tunnel of trees now, and a sudden shadow overtakes the carriage. You decide to unwrap your napping nougat, break it in half, and offer a piece to your friend. The first bite is an instant sensation. Your lips become warm, and a soft vibration begins to run over them, traveling into your mouth and over your tongue. A deep relaxation and warmth trickles through your body now, and the temptation to close your eyes is almost irresistible. As you enjoy this delicious, sticky treat, you think about the magic of the dragon's display and you feel a new excitement inside you, ready for your arrival at the castle. You emerge in a flash from the tunnel of trees, and now before your eyes is a luminous green valley with the setting sun perfectly in the middle. The golden rays reflect on a huge body of water below, creating a shimmering starlight on the lake. The train plows forward onto a long, curved viaduct, looking out across this hidden valley. Tall grey archways hold up this enormous bridge with ease and the view before you is breathtaking. Eagles dance in the red sunset and soar gracefully down the valley. The rippling water creates a glitter below, and the top of the sun peers over the horizon in a rich crimson and gold. Your eyelids are heavy now, 
and your best friend is already fast asleep. They lie comfortably on their seat, peaceful and relaxed. And as you gaze at this glorious sunset, your head resting on the window, you feel your whole body losing all tension as each muscle begins to soften and unravel like a warm butter slowly melting. Your mind is clear of thoughts and the only thing that matters is this glorious sunset. The golden red valley and the far green country. All of this slowly fades now and you are sinking deeper and deeper into a wonderful nap. And then, as soon as you feel your eyes close, you open them again. A peace and quiet surrounds you now, and the golden valley is no more. Instead, a rich blue night washes over you, and the light of the full moon beams into your window, and the train is completely still. You have arrived. From outside your window, you see a train station with a single platform. You watch stars beginning to reveal themselves, one by one, backed by a dark night. The moon illuminates the frosted concrete below and gives off a silver glitter. Thin, bare trees are dusted with a light evening frost. And as you watch the first students jumping off the train and onto the platform, you can see their breath in clouds of white. You flip open your suitcase and pull out a thick pair of gloves and a woolly hat in your favourite colour. Your friend has woken up now and there is a silent anticipation in the air. You place your animal in their cage, collect your belongings and say goodbye to your warm and cosy carriage. You wander down the corridor and slowly step out of the train and join in the hustle and bustle of happy, eager students. You are met with a cool breeze that is refreshing to breathe in after a long journey inside. It is crisp, but not too cold, and your gloves keep your hands and fingers toasty and warm. The steam from the engine mingles in the air and creates a misty, enchanting atmosphere. The moonlight reflects onto the train and transforms the matte crimson into a deep, glistening scarlet, coupled with a rich black and lined with luminous gold. Around the station is a small collection of grey houses, pieced together with bricks of different sizes and topped with dark brown tiles. Each one has a red door coupled with two square windows on each side. Thick plant life climbs the walls and spreads across the grey brick, with one or two white flowers poking through the green. A 
black and red iron bridge connects each side of the platform. As you shuffle on the concrete, unsure of where to go next, you turn to see the white moustached conductor beaming down at you with a gleam in his eye. He offers to take your briefcase and your animal and put them with the rest of your belongings. These will all be taken care of, he tells you, and will be waiting for you in your dormitory. You thank the conductor once again and bid farewell to your animal for now. You and your friend wander through the thin layer of mist swirling a foot above the ground, and you join up with a large group of witches and wizards congregating at the end of the station. Above you is the silhouette of many owls flying off into the night, backed by the white orb of the moon. Then, you hear a friendly voice calling out instructions. You recognize it immediately. Through the crowd, the gentle giant catches your eye, giving you a secret smile and a mischievous wink. He calls out to all first years to follow him through the woodland grove. As the congregation shuffles along, you and your friend race around the outside of the group and catch up with your new friend. The giant greets you with a hand on your shoulder and, without breaking his stride, begins to guide you down the woodland path full of loose twigs and fallen leaves. He asks you all about your first adventure on the express, and if you manage to see his dear friend Norbert on the way. You tell him all about the wonderful dragon display, and reveal your excitement for the sorting ceremony. He gives a low chuckle, remembering when he too first arrived at this magical castle. Nothing like it, he tells you, nothing like it. High above you, more and more stars twinkle with delight, and the moonlight dabbles through the trees, guiding your way in tiny spotlights on the forest floor. As you emerge from the end of the grove, you arrive at the edge of an enormous lake, bordered by thick grass, with a dusting of frost on the tips of green. At the edge of the lake, there is a collection of long wooden piers. Lined up along the piers are small rowing boats with a golden lantern hanging at the head of each one. Some of the other students are already jumping confidently into the boats. With the giant's hand on your back and your best friend by your side, you are led to the very end of the pier and towards a much bigger rowing boat. The gentle giant picks you up with ease and places you in the boat. You take a deep breath, sensing that the castle is not far away. The boat sways vigorously as the giant steps aboard, making himself comfortable towards the rear. 
Upon these boats lies a powerful enchantment, he tells you, making it impossible for them to tip, even with a great big clumsy giant sitting in them, he says, pointing a huge finger at his own chest, a proud smile on his face. When all the students are safely inside, the oars move themselves into place and begin to row by themselves. You feel a gentle jerk as the boat sets off, but in a few seconds you are drifting effortlessly over calm waters. There is the sensation of floating gliding along the never-ending lake, illuminated by the crystal moon, a soft breeze on your cheeks. There is a light mist rising from the lake, making it difficult to see in front of you, but this only adds to the mystery. A lantern hangs at the front of your boat, and as you look behind, you see an infinite collection of these soft yellow lights, like tiny fireflies following you on this magical boat ride. The silver stars pepper the black, coupled with a hint of purple and sapphire that outlines the swirling galaxy that is watching over you tonight. You allow yourself to enjoy this moment of serenity, of total tranquility. The sound of the paddles lapping in the water and the stillness of the night creates an atmosphere of complete And then, as if by magic, the mist evaporates, almost in slow motion, revealing the most beautiful sight of all. Straight ahead of you, sitting atop A high and jagged rock formation is the castle that you call home. Curved towers of gothic grey stand high and proud, creating a silhouette in the moonlight, backed by the snow-capped mountains in the distance. Golden orbs pulse from the windows, overlooking the castle grounds and beaming down over the lake, like a collection of lighthouses guiding you home. As you gaze in wonder at this incredible sight, you know now that after years of searching, of waiting, you have finally found where you belong. Your best friend puts their arm around you, pulling you into a tight embrace. They whisper to you, that there is nowhere else they would rather be, and nobody else they would rather be with. You could not be more grateful to have this special person with you tonight, as you both begin your journey into magic.
her warmth flows through you now. And you know that no matter what happens, and no matter where life takes you, this wonderful castle and its enchanting world will always be here for you. The tall towers draw closer now, as the boats gently row to a new shore, stopping in a perfect line. Ahead of you, many golden torches illuminate the concrete steps, climbing up the steep rock face. Your eyes follow the zigzagging steps, up and up, until they reach the pointed silhouette of the enchanting castle. Your gentle giant takes the lead, guiding your group up the steps. On your climb, you talk happily with your best friend as you reminisce on the wonderful memories of the day. You imagine what possibly lies in store for you behind the castle doors. In what feels like seconds, you reach the very top of the stairs. Straight ahead of you are two huge iron doors forming an arched entrance and parted by a thin crack, a golden beam shimmering through. Far down to your left, you look back out over the lake and the silver glimmer of the moon dances on the water. The air up here is clean and fresh and absolutely magical. In front of you, the huge hands of the giant push open the doors, and your group is swallowed by the golden light as you shuffle inside the echoey halls. Once more you are guided up a set of concrete steps, and as you reach the top, there, sitting in front of a thick wooden door, is a small grey cat with black stripes along its back. The cat has piercing, all-seeing eyes. It has clearly lived here for a very long time. The cat jumps forward, and your eyes widen in amazement as mid-air it transforms in the blink of an eye. Standing before you now is a tall, thin, elderly witch, a professor here, and the deputy headmistress. She dons an emerald robe, topped with a black, pointy hat. Her stern but gentle eyes reveal an unrivaled wisdom. The headmistress flicks her head around the group, taking in every single fresh-faced student in front of her. Suddenly, her cat-like eyes meet yours, and you feel a nervous but excited energy in your stomach. 
For a fraction of a second, you could have sworn that she smiled at you. Standing in her presence, you feel completely protected. There is an undeniable love running through her. She would do anything to keep each and every one of you safe. In the next moment, she tells you to move through the great hall and assemble in front of the large brown hat. The sorting ceremony is about to begin. With a delicate flick of her wand, the large wooden door swings open effortlessly. As you walk through the door, you are met with a new life, and a buzz of excitement erupts from the many witches and wizards around you. The hall is made of grey stone, with gargoyles holding small braziers of fire on their backs, crackling away. There are four long trestle tables side by side. Above each table is a different set of banners. From left to right you have the silver serpent backed by an emerald green. Next is the banner of the bronze eagle coupled with dark blue. Then comes the gold lion on a red banner over the third table. And finally, to your right, the black badger mingled with a dark yellow. The headmistress leads you down the hall. The walls rise above you into a high arched ceiling, but the top of the ceiling cannot be seen, for in its place is a beautiful recreation of the night sky. There sits the pearl moon, and the black night is peppered with silver stars that twinkle in the darkness. Just below this bewitched sky is a collection of floating candles, hundreds of tiny orange flames bobbing up and down. Your group stops at the end of the hall, in front of a small stool. Atop the stool is an old brown leather hat, slightly dusty with a wide brim. This is the sorting hat. It has played a vital role in the destinies of every witch and wizard that has walked through these doors and tonight it will decide your fate. Behind the stool is another table full of all the professors who teach at the school. In the middle is a beautiful hand-carved golden throne, and there sits the headmaster. His long white hair and flowing beard are almost the same length. He is an old man now, but his magnetic aura captivates you, and his presence in the room is undeniable. There is a childlike curiosity still living within him, and his piercing blue eyes sweep around the room behind half-moon spectacles, coupled with a warm, satisfied smile. Your gentle giant joins the professor's table now, and the deputy headmistress stands beside the sorting hat. The headmaster stands up 
and taps his spoon against his small sherry glass. The great hall falls into silence. He welcomes you, one and all, at last to this magical castle. Here is a place of enchantment and wonder, a place of adventure, of trials and exciting challenges. Here you will put your skills and your character to the test, embarking on your own unique journey to become a great student of magic. His eyes flick to meet yours. He tilts his head and gives you a mischievous smile with the corner of his mouth, followed by a subtle wink. You feel your cheeks flush and a wave of nerves passes through your stomach. And without further ado, he adds, it is time to begin the sorting ceremony. Your best friend grabs your arm excitedly as the first name is called out. You watch a young witch hesitantly step up to the stool. The headmistress places the sorting hat on her head. As soon as the hat makes contact, you notice it takes the shape of a face. A face lacking detail, but with a big leathery mouth and drooping eyebrows at the top. The mouth is moving, and although you cannot hear any words, it is clear that the young witch can. Her eyes look up and trace left to right nervously. Then the hat opens its mouth once again, and out comes a booming voice that echoes across the hall, calling out a house name, this time for all to hear. The young witch shuffles down sheepishly, and joins the students underneath the blue and bronze banner. Suddenly, the headmistress calls your name. In that moment, the world around you seems to come to a complete standstill. You look at your friend hesitantly and slowly make your way up to the stool. The headmistress gives you a comforting smile, and you feel your nerves melting away in her presence. You sit and gaze out across the hall. Everything in front of you is a blur now. You are focused only on the sorting hat as it is lowered down onto your head. As it touches your crown, the great hall seems to fade entirely, and even the crackling of the fire has disappeared. And then you hear it speak. Well, 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 here is a promising prospect, if ever I saw one. I wonder where to put you. Then your thoughts turn to the four wizarding houses. You focus intensely on your favourite house. Yes, I thought that would be your choice. It makes sense. But are you sure... You find yourself repeating the same words over and over. Yes, I am sure. Yes, I am sure. And then the great hall comes back into focus. Your best friend stares at you in anticipation. 
and the hat bellows out your chosen wizarding house, and a huge wave of relief washes over you. An eruption of applause and cheers come from your new house table. You are met with handshakes, pats on the back, and many happy faces welcoming you to your new house, and an unstoppable smile beams across your face. You look down, and your black tie transforms into the two colours of your house. You cannot believe it. In a happy daze, you watch a series of students being sorted left and right into their new houses. And then your best friend sits at the stool. Before the hat can even touch their head, it bellows out the same house name as yours. Of course, it had to be. They are your best friend, after all. They climb down the steps and run over to you, and you fall into a tight embrace. You welcome them to their new house, and watch with delight as their tie changes colour too, matching yours now. Finally, as the last student is sorted, the deputy headmistress takes away the stool, and with it the sorting hat. Its mouth and brow have faded now, and it looks very much like an ordinary brown leather hat. That is, until next year. The headmaster stands up, and once again tinks his spoon upon his glass. He calmly announces that dinner is served. Before your eyes, out of thin air, appears the most wonderful feast you have ever laid eyes on. Huge silver platters of delicious roast dinners, vegetables, and fresh hot gravy are dotted along the table. Enormous cauldrons of soup are floating just above the table, with freshly baked bread giving off an enchanting smell. There are golden goblets that fill by themselves with whatever drink you desire. You simply say the name. And there is dessert, too. Silver and gold plates stacked high with chocolate logs, cake, fruit, and freshly made candy. This enormous buffet is encompassed by an enchanting stardust that drifts around the table in celebration of this magical feast. It is a bounteous banquet, with every type of food you could possibly imagine. A ravishing hunger comes over you as you begin to fill your plate with all your favourite food, and request your favourite drink from your golden goblet. You sit close to your best friend, still marvelling at the wonderful magic going on all around you. As you enjoy your feast, you feel the food start to warm your stomach. You savour every beautiful bite and every tantalising taste that dances across your tongue. The drink in your goblet is refreshing and cleanses your palate. In this moment 
nothing else matters. You are here in the place of your dreams, sat with your best friend, enjoying delicious food and a wonderful atmosphere. Just then, you see the friendly ghosts of the castle drifting into the great hall. Some come through the floor, and others appear through the large windows or out of the walls. They are not scary, though, not in the least. These ghosts are the true guardians of this castle, and they are welcomed by everyone. There is a grand countess pacing the stone steps to your right. A knight on horseback gallops around the teacher's table. A ghostly court jester juggles white apples on the far side of the hall, as many more wonderful characters mingle around. Some of them acknowledge you and the other new students with a smile or a tip of the hat, while others are simply there to enjoy the atmosphere. One of the ghosts, a rather plump gentleman wearing a thick white renaissance wig, floats above your table, gurgling on a goblet of wine. On his last gulp, he lets out a very loud burp, and your table erupts in laughter. The ghost swoops out of the hall, chuckling away mischievously. The infectious laughter echoes round the table, and soon the entire great hall is sat giggling away at the belching ghost. You gaze around this truly magnificent hall, with its perfect stonework and enchanting atmosphere. Above you, the candles burn in small orange spotlights, and beyond that is the swirling galaxy of stars, paired with the pulsing orb of the moon. As conversation mingles round the table, you let your mind drift to the day that you have had, and you think back to your journey so far, and all the wonderful memories you already have that will stay with you forever. You suddenly remember the lovely black and white sleepy cat who guided your way here, and although you miss them terribly, you know that right now they are probably enjoying a hearty dinner back at the tavern, and will very soon be curled up by the fire, ready for a long sleep, chasing birds in their dreams. You think about the joy of meeting the gentle giant today, who, as you turn to look at him, gives you a happy wave and a beaming smile. You reminisce on your wonderful train ride, and seeing your first ever dragon, the first of many, you hope. Your thoughts turn to the enchanting boat ride across the glistening lake, and the unforgettable sight of your new forever home, backed by the infinite night. You truly belong here. As the feast comes to an end, the plates of food and goblets begin to fade out of sight, until you are left once again with the thick wooden tabletop. 
there is a full and satisfied feeling washing over you now and a new heaviness in your body. The headmaster announces that all new students are to follow the prefects of their house to find their common room. All of your belongings and your animals will be there waiting for you. As you exit the great hall, you are guided through long stone corridors with high curved ceilings and decorated with hand-carved pillars. Many oil paintings hang on the walls with moving pictures. Some feature famous witches and wizards or diplomats in the wizarding world, and others are paintings of scenes, wizarding battles through history, or famous magical families from ages long since past, their memories kept alive through these enchanted paintings. Before you know it, you are shuffling into a small wooden door and through a tiny corridor, your eyes half closed. As you round a corner to your left, the room opens up into an enormous Victorian living space. There is a huge log fireplace surrounded with white stone, set in one corner, giving off a roaring glow and a perfect heat. The furniture is decorated in the colours of your wizarding house. An oil painting rests in the middle wall, a huge portrait depicting the founder of your house. The wooden floor is peppered with rugs, again in the colours of your house. Blankets and cushions of all sizes are thrown over the armchairs and the sofas. There is a collection of small wooden writing desks where one or two older wizards are already scribbling away on summer assignments. Circling one half of the room is an enormous bookshelf, packed full of old leather-bound books and dusty hardbacks with loose pages. Some of the dates on the spines of the books reveal that they are over 900 years old. Above you is a beautiful chandelier with a collection of dimmed lights spinning gently on the ceiling. Your best friend leads you to a two-person sofa, full of blankets and pillows, and placed directly in front of the fire. A few other new students join you and sit opposite in different armchairs and sofas, or perch on the rug. The group shares a smile, and you let out a collective sigh after what has been a truly exhausting day. Your friend puts a hand into their pocket and pulls out their piece of napping nougat, bought from the friendly old lady on the express. They break the nougat into small chunks and pass it round the group. As you chew this delicious, sleepy snack, a murmur of conversation begins around the group, and you take it in turns to tell your tale about how you arrived here. 
Some of your new friends are already from wizarding families, and so were expecting the letter. Others are like you, completely unaware of having this magic within them. You realize how comfortable you feel already, and how quickly you are settling in to your new home. The fire roars gently, and you find yourself slowly drifting out of the conversation and into a deep relaxation, your eyes becoming heavier and heavier. A magical aura washes over you, and the atmosphere in your common room is a peaceful paradise of warmth and comfort. You are sinking deeper and deeper into the heavenly cushions, warmed by the wonderful crackling fire and feeling the magic of the napping nougat. It is an incredible thing to be completely free from thought and open to a world of possibility. You begin to feel that drifting sensation now on the borders of sleep. And just before it can take hold, you decide to bid good night to your new companions. And, followed by your best friend, you wander down the stone corridor toward your bedroom. One of the prefects points the way to your room, and you thank them with a sleepy smile. Your feet flop heavily on the concrete as your half-closed eyes guide you now, step by step, closer to bed. In front of you now appears a small wooden door. As you approach, the metal latch flicks and the door creaks open by itself. You are standing in a cosy room with a collection of comfortable beds and decorations all in the colours of your wizarding house, illuminated by the starlight beaming in through the window. There is a powerful enchantment in this room and the stars themselves are singing their very own lullaby tonight. Your luggage is stacked perfectly at the foot of your bed, and at the very top, your animal is fast asleep in their cage. You poke a finger through their cage and give them a loving stroke on the top of their head, Eyes closed, they give your hand an affectionate sniff before dropping their head back down into sleep. Your best friend has already flopped down onto their bed and murmurs a muffled good night as they drift off in an instant. Before you know it, you are under the covers of your own bed, sinking deeper and deeper into this cloud-like mattress. The soft pillow supports your head perfectly, allowing you to completely let go. From the window, 
next to your bed, you can see the vast grounds of the castle, illuminated by the spotlight of the moon and dotted with silver stars above it. You feel blessed to call this castle your home. The dreams you had of this place for all those years have finally been realized. And now you are on your own wizarding adventure. This is your story. You know now that no matter what, this castle and this world will always be here for you whenever you need it. It has been a perfect day and you feel a gentle excitement run through you at the thought of tomorrow. Tomorrow you begin your first lessons in magic. For now, however, it is time to rest, to relax your body and soothe your mind, to enter a world of dreams where you might glide above the highest mountain or climb the tallest trees or sail an enchanted sea. The stars will watch over you tonight and they will guide your dreams. You are safe. You are warm. You are protected. Your eyelids are heavy now and firmly closed. Your body and your mind is sinking deeper and deeper and any remaining thoughts are falling away from you, leaving nothing but a beautiful black canvas decorated with stars and the twilight moon. You give yourself final permission to let go now and allow yourself to drift into an enchanted and peaceful sleep. This magic is yours. With your eyes closed, you wake up to the low crackle of a simmering fire, coupled with the sound of autumn birds chirping away happily. The rich smell of old wood and fresh laundry drifts in the air. The thick, heavy duvet rests over your body comforting and warm. As you blink open your eyes, you see a gaping window by your bed, welcoming in a soft morning breeze. Your sleepy gaze wanders around the room and you take in your new surroundings, unfamiliar but comfortable and homely. In the middle of your bedroom sits an iron furnace and inside is a log fire bubbling away, radiating a wonderful heat 
that wraps around your body, coating you with warmth. The curtains, cushions and your bed sheets are decorated in the colors of your wizarding house and all of a sudden you realize where you are. You find yourself reminiscing on the magical memories from yesterday. You remember waking up in the magical tavern and during breakfast you were reunited with the beautiful black and white sleepy cat who would come to see you off on your adventure. You met your new friend, the wonderful giant, and travelled to King's Cross using enchanted flu powder. Then, after running through a magical gateway onto platform nine and three quarters, you boarded the express train and made your way across an alluring landscape of rolling hills, pockets of thick trees, and many beautiful animals living together in perfect harmony. It was on this train ride that you saw your very first dragon, Norbert, the guardian of the school, and a very old friend of your gentle giant. When the train finally stopped, you were guided by the giant through a woodland grove, arriving at a collection of small wooden boats. Once everyone was firmly seated, the boats began to row by themselves, carrying you across the mystical lake, guarded by starlight, towards your new forever home, the castle. Once inside, you were taken into the great hall at last and sorted by the hat into your favorite wizarding house, your best friend quickly following behind. You have dreamt of this moment for as long as you can remember and today you begin your first lessons as a student of magic, ready for your own adventure. Speaking of your best friend, they are still fast asleep and right now are nothing more than a bundle under their covers. You make a mental note to remind them just how loud they were snoring this morning. Dotted around the room atop sturdy wooden shelves are little plant pots filled with many colorful flowers and enchanted herbs with purple and red leaves. Some of the flowers are moving by themselves, rippling with the morning breeze. As you step out of bed and open up your drawers, you are surprised to see all of your belongings packed neatly inside. Everything is color-coded, clothes are folded, books are arranged in alphabetical order on your shelf, and your cases are tucked perfectly away on top of your wardrobe. But if you didn't do this, then who did? Perhaps it is simply one more wonderful feature of this magical castle. Just then, you hear a rustle from your bedside table, and you turn to see your pet animal finally waking up, giving a wide yawn as their sleepy eyes struggle to stay open. You wander over to their cage, unlock the door, and hold your companion gently in your arms. You reach into your rucksack by your bed and pull out a box of their favorite treats, 
feeding them from your hand as you shuffle over to the window. In the quiet calm of the morning, you perch on the inside ledge, cradling your animal and gazing out across the eternal landscape in front of you. Surrounding the castle is a flurry of green grass, bordered by a thick, dark forest with leaves of blue, orange and purple. A single willow tree, as wide as a house and at least 50 feet tall, stands proudly in the middle of the grounds. To your left is an oval stadium encompassed by tall wooden towers, each with banners of the four wizarding houses waving gently in the wind. Past the stadium and beyond the castle grounds sits a quiet, cosy village made up of little grey stoned cottages with thatched roofs. A collection of stumpy chimneys give off a silver haze that mingles over the village. Your animal breathes slow and steady as they relax deeper into your arms, enjoying this quiet time with you. You feel your own breath slowing down as well, and a new relaxation is flowing through your body. Then, among the clouds above you, you catch sight of an enormous bird of ruby and gold. Your eyes follow this majestic animal as it dives down and glides over the huge lake. The bird's mighty talons skim the surface, creating a ripple on the water that glistens against the golden sunrise. In a smooth, effortless flight, this bird takes off once again and drifts over to a solitary hut made of mismatched brick and topped with a brown roof shaped like a witch's hat. Here resides your dear friend, the gentle giant, who is the gamekeeper of the castle and professor of magical creatures. This enchanted bird dances across the sunrise, darting through wisps of white cloud in the pastel blue sky, backed by the grey silhouette of the mountains far off in the distance. It is the perfect picture of a perfect morning. Filled now with a deep sense of peace and a new excitement for the day ahead, you wander back over to your wardrobe and start to change into your wizarding robes. Your wonderful companion sits upon your bed now and you leave their cage open, allowing them to roam free today and hopefully make some new friends of their own. Your animal won't be joining you in your lessons today, but they will always be here to be your friend and guardian whenever you need them. You are companions for life. And now, fully robed and ready for the day, you reach into your pocket and remove your wand. Instantly, you feel its magic pulse through your arm, up into your body, and begin to radiate all around you. 
you realize how lucky you are to be here in this castle, a proud student of magic. You are ready. With a glance to your best friend, still fast asleep, you decide to let them rest a little longer after the busy day yesterday. You will catch up later over breakfast in the Great Hall. Placing your wand back into your pocket, you take up your bag and head down the stone corridor towards your common room. It seems today you are the first one awake as the common room is completely empty. The embers of last night's fire are giving off an orange glow that illuminates the space. The tall wooden clock to your right ticks on in a steady rhythm and the enchanted atmosphere is ever present in this cosy, beautiful room. As your eyes flick to the sofa on your left, you notice a small magical creature fluffing the cushions and patting them down, humming a happy tune. For the moment, they are oblivious to your presence, but as you step towards them, the floorboards creak. Their head quickly turns, and you are met by the big, wondrous eyes of a little elf gazing up at you with a nervous curiosity. They stand with their hands together, fidgeting with their fingers, before giving you a low bow. With a gentle smile, you return the bow, and the elf gives a surprised stare. You greet them with your name, and ask this little creature theirs, Daphne, she tells you, Daphne the house elf. She has a small, thin body and rather skinny arms and legs. Her kind face is made up of big, brown, hopeful eyes, a pointed nose and large floppy ears that give her an innocent and endearing expression. Daphne explains, with a slight stutter, that, hoping you wouldn't mind, she took the liberty of unpacking your things, cleaning your clothes, and organizing your wardrobe. She thought you might be nervous for your first day, and wanted to give you one less thing to worry about. Gazing at this little elf, you feel an instant connection with the lovely Daphne and you thank her for all her help, holding out your hand. She hesitates for a moment, but then, giving a warm smile, takes your hand and asks politely if you would like to be her friend. With an irresistible chuckle, you accept her very generous offer, and she gives an excited hop around the room, beaming with delight. You take this moment to ask her why she was so surprised that you returned her bow. Daphne stops and shuffles over to you. You kneel down to meet her as she whispers that although the house elf is now a free creature, there was a time when they were not, and they were looked down on by wizards and witches and treated rather poorly. Many of the elves were brought here long ago to work, cook, and clean the castle. However, Daphne reassures you that the current headmaster has always looked after the elves and their families, keeping them safe, warm, and well-fed. So much so that even after the house elf liberation, 
all the workers here, including herself, decided to stay and live in comfort, continuing to care for the castle and its students. She is happy here, she tells you, but it is still a shock sometimes to be treated as an equal, Daphne adds with a sheepish smile, even now. Well, so long as she is your friend, she will be met with nothing but love and kindness, you tell her. And with that, little Daphne leaps into your arms, holding on tight. You feel a warmth radiate from her tiny chest. She takes a step back and places your palms against hers, making a binding promise to be your guardian in this castle and to watch over you. Daphne glances at the ticking clock and gives a gasp, telling you she ought to be in the kitchen right now, preparing the breakfast feast. Your eyes widen in amazement as you realize that last night's incredible dinner was made in part by Daphne. Promising to find you again later, she snaps her fingers and, in a blink, disappears into thin air. Daphne truly is one of the most precious creatures you have ever known. You stand in silence and smile at the thought of this lovely new friend joining your ever-growing list of beautiful companions. In that moment, you hear footsteps from the corridor behind. You turn to see your best friend, fully robed now, giving you a sleepy smile, followed by a wide yawn. With a new excitement, you place a hand on their shoulder and lead them from the common room down the echoey stone corridors of the castle, telling them all about your new friend, Daphne the House Elf. With a hint of regret, having not woken up early enough to meet her, your best friend asks you to introduce them the first chance you get. You agree to do this, of course, and soon the conversation turns to the day ahead, what lessons you might have later, and the subjects you are most excited for. On the walls around you, the wizards and witches in the many oil paintings are beginning to wake up themselves. Some give a loud yawn, and you watch a series of sunrises appear in these paintings as the many moons fade out of sight. The doors into the great hall are already open, with pockets of students filtering inside. The smell of a hot breakfast drifts through the huge archway, and with a low rumble in your stomach, the two of you race inside. The atmosphere is far more subdued and informal than the sorting ceremony and grand feast last night. The hall is dotted with drowsy students, sharing mumbled conversation and enjoying the beautiful breakfast banquet that is spread over each table. The little fires on the gargoyles continue to crackle, giving an eternal warmth to this wondrous hall. Above you, the enchanted ceiling is no longer filled with stars and galaxies. It has been replaced with the golden red sun 
rising in the east, and the pastel blue sky is illuminated in a crimson and gold light. You make your way to the table underneath the huge banner of your house, and as you take a seat, one or two older students greet you with a smile. They tuck into their breakfasts and sip a hot morning tea or coffee as they scribble down notes for their latest assignment. You take in this endless feast in front of you, spread across the entire table, and you are reminded of the little elf. You take a moment to pause and whisper a thank you to Daphne, and then, with a fresh hunger, you fill your plate with all the food that you crave the most this morning. You remember these magical golden goblets from last night, and, knowing what to expect, you speak the name of your desired drink. Instantly, the goblet fills from the bottom up, stopping perfectly below the rim. As you take your first sip, you feel a beautiful vibration across your lips. This vibration travels over your tongue and down into your body, resting in the pit of your stomach. You feel every single muscle in your body relax and soften now, as you find yourself in a tranquil state of peace and comfort. A murmur of conversation mingles around the table, and you dip in and out of it as you continue to enjoy your magical breakfast. One or two of the friendly ghosts are drifting around the room, and as they float over to your table, they bid you all a good morning, and you return the greeting. You gaze around this mighty hall once again, taking in all of your surroundings, still amazed that after all these years of waiting, of hoping, you have finally arrived at the castle of your dreams. You share a smile with your best friend, and you feel so lucky to have them with you today. As you look over to the professor's table, you lock eyes with your gentle giant who gives you an eager thumbs up, coupled with a beaming smile. You feel your heart brighten at the sight of your wonderful friend, and just being in this giant's presence, you know that you are completely protected here, and well looked after. In the next moment, a huge parliament of owls flies in through the high windows of the hall. Each owl carries a letter or a small parcel, and each silently glides down to the many recipients dotted around the hall. To your surprise, a smooth feathered tawny owl fixes their amber eyes onto you and floats itself down to your table, landing directly in front of you. Clasped between its beak are two letters. Your gentle owl pats its feet in excitement, urging you to take your letters, and as you do, it turns itself around in a little circle, hooting happily. The first piece of parchment is rolled up tight, tied with red string. 
as you unravel it, you see your house emblem embossed at the very top. Here is a timetable for all of your lessons coming up this week. Your best friend leans in with their parchment in hand and you compare timetables. Today you both begin with a lesson in flying, learning how to use a broomstick. Following this you will start your journey into transfiguration with care of magical creatures coming in the afternoon. Finally, after sunset, you will meet at the very top of the tallest tower to begin your adventure into astronomy and your deep study of the night sky. Just then, your friend notices that your second letter is addressed to both of you and on the other side of the envelope, underneath the red wax seal, are the initials A.D. You peel open the envelope and unfold the thick parchment. The letter reads, I hope your first night at the castle was a comfortable one. You are invited to visit my office this morning before your first lesson, I would very much like to speak with the both of you. Signed, your headmaster. A flutter of nerves runs through you as you turn your head to the professor's table. Instantly you catch the old headmaster sitting atop his golden throne, that same youthful energy radiating from him. He gives you a quiet nod with the hint of a smile as he peeps over his half-moon spectacles, his piercing blue eyes revealing a deep kindness coupled with mischief. In the next moment you feel a huge hand gently land on your shoulder and, turning, you see the gentle giant looking down over his frizzy black beard. He gives you a smile and offers to guide you to the headmaster's office, his beady brown eyes full of excitement. As you look back to the teacher's table, the golden throne is empty and the headmaster has disappeared. With a hesitant look to your friend, you both stand up and follow behind the giant's heavy stride. You sweep out of the great hall and wander up a series of hard concrete steps. As you journey through the corridors, you ask the giant why the headmaster wants to see you. He taps his enormous finger against his nose, giving you a cheeky smile, and tells you not to worry, not to worry at all. The giant adds that you should look forward to care of magical creatures this afternoon. He has a real treat in store, he says proudly, a real treat. All of a sudden, you find yourself in a quiet, hidden corner of the castle, facing an arched alcove. Inside is a huge stone statue in the shape of a powerful eagle, its wings stretched out towards you. The giant places a reassuring hand on your shoulder, guiding you inside the alcove. He takes a step back and with a smile speaks the words Sherbet Lemon. There is a low rumble under your feet and in the next moment the stone eagle bows its head and starts to turn on the spot. Suddenly 
you feel yourself being lifted and a stone staircase begins to spiral up around the eagle. As you slowly turn, rising up bit by bit, you watch the shadowy figure of your gentle giant begin to fade out of sight. Still, this magical castle never fails to surprise you. Then, the winding staircase stops, and you are met by a tall wooden door with golden handles in the middle. A nervous excitement bounces between you and your friend, and with a shared smile, you open the door together. There is a deep, powerful magic in this room. You feel it all around you. The atmosphere is quiet and subdued. A brazier of blue fire gives off a low crackle, illuminating one corner of the room in a rich sapphire, and a fine gold dust dances through the air and twinkles with delight. The wall on your left is made entirely of thick bookshelves, towering from floor to ceiling and packed full of dusty hardbacks. They appear to be in some kind of order, although it is impossible to decipher. Peppering the wall on your right is a collection of oil paintings, depicting all the previous headmasters and mistresses of the school. There are too many paintings to count, but the eldest, perched at the very top, is dated back over a thousand years. Some of the teachers are taking a morning nap, and others are quietly watching over you, guarding this enchanted room. Hanging above you is a small chandelier of candles, perfectly still and unflickering, blanketing the office in a soft yellow light. Two white pillars stand proudly on each side of a wooden desk in front of you. Atop the desk is a purple and gold lantern that pulses in a steady rhythm. Behind the pillars are two sets of white stairs leading up to a raised platform. In the middle of this platform is the silhouette of an enormous globe, rotating in mid-air perfectly on its axis. As your eyes flick down, you spot the very same bird of ruby and gold from this morning, perched to one side of the desk and looking right at you. As you move closer, you realize that this is no ordinary bird, but a phoenix. Your best friend squeezes your arm, admitting in a low whisper that they had no idea phoenixes were even real. And yet, here one sits, right before your eyes, as clear as day. You reach out to the phoenix, and this majestic animal gently sniffs your hand. They brush their head against your palm and ruffle their feathers in excitement. In the next moment, the phoenix steps gently onto your forearm, looking at you in complete trust as they tilt their head left to right. There is a soft beauty to this innocent creature, 
and the watery eyes of the phoenix radiate a powerful love and reveal the knowledge of many lives lived. They gaze at you like an old friend and already you feel a deep connection to this wonderful animal. From above you, a calm voice calls out, the tears of a phoenix can heal even the deepest of wounds. As your head flicks up to the platform, you see the flowing white beard of the headmaster hanging over you as he leans on the railing, a twinkle in his eye. The wily old professor shuffles down the steps to your right, lifting his cloak just above his feet and muttering under his breath. It is mostly inaudible, but you catch something about a little bit of twirling toffee stuck in his teeth. Suddenly, standing for the first time in his presence, you feel a strong paternal love coming from him. You can see how much he adores this castle and all who dwell within. He might look like a gentle grandfather, but age is not to be mistaken for weakness, for in front of you now stands arguably the most powerful wizard who ever lived. The unrivaled magical prowess and wisdom of the headmaster is clear to see. Even the characters in these enchanted oil paintings appear to revel and bask in his grace. And yet, despite all this, he is humble, gentle, and uncommonly kind. The headmaster gives the phoenix a gentle pat on the head and he tells you that they have been his friend for as long as he can remember. The phoenix can never truly die, he adds, scratching his old companion under the chin, for even after their long life comes to an end, the phoenix bursts into a magical flame, only to be reborn from the ashes. A new body of youth and vitality, but a mind and spirit as old as the earth. This is a true bird of the heavens. They are a guardian of this world, and now clearly a guardian of you, the professor adds with a wink. Good friends are hard to come by, he says so be sure to keep them close. And with that, the old professor lifts the elegant phoenix from your arm and places it back upon its perch. Now to business. I understand that neither of you were able to find a suitable broomstick before your journey here, so I took the liberty of picking them out myself. I hope you don't mind, but I do have a good eye for these things. And with that, the headmaster flicks his wand effortlessly, and two long parcels lift from behind the desk. They drift towards you and land right into your arms. The wrapping paper falls away, revealing a rich mahogany broomstick with smooth bristles in a bulb shape, one for each of you. The elegance and beauty of this broomstick is unlike anything you have ever seen. The wood is finished with a soft varnish and is weightless in your hands. On each side are two silver footrests and inscribed at the very top are your initials, coupled with your house crest. The kind old professor lets out a low chuckle 
as you both give a wide-eyed stare. He reminds you, with a raise of his eyebrows, that these are not toys and must be treated with respect. Together with your friend, you thank this wonderful professor over and over again, until with a soft smile he raises his hand. Consider it a welcome gift, and use it well, he adds with a mischievous wink. Now, best be off, or you might be late for your flying lesson, and I wouldn't want to see you in detention on your first day. And with that, you bid him a good morning, wave goodbye to your phoenix guardian, and run back to the alcove, racing down the spiral steps, chuckling away with your best friend. As you reach the bottom, you run through the maze-like corridors, retracing your steps from your journey with the giant. Before you know it, you arrive at a small archway that opens out onto the castle grounds. You can hear the murmur of students gathering outside. You take a moment to compose yourself and casually walk down the steps out onto the vast green field, trying not to appear out of breath. Your group is gathered around a tall, thin witch with spiked grey hair and deep-set amber eyes. She clears her throat <coughs> looking right at you, and the class falls into silence. For a moment, you have no idea what to expect. But then, her stern face softens to a knowing smile as she looks at your brand new broomsticks, shining in the morning sun. With a sudden, bouncing energy, she calls out, that it is time to begin. Professor, or Madame, as she prefers to be called, instructs you all to create two long lines facing one another, and place your broomstick on the floor, underneath your dominant hand. This is it, the moment you have been waiting for, your very first taste of magic. Madame insists that the first rule of flying is confidence. If you do not believe that you can do it, then you never will. Now there is no need to worry, she adds. I will be here guiding you all on this journey. And if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. To begin, she continues, Raise your hand above your broomstick and give a firm command with the word up. You call out the command, but your broomstick only twitches on the ground. Just then, you hesitate and peer down the long line of students. As the muffled commands continue to call out, you see every single broomstick still on the floor. Some haven't even flinched, while others swing left to right, or hover an inch or two above the ground, refusing to go any further. Right now, it would be so easy to give up, or to let doubt overwhelm you. After all, you have only known about magic for a few days. You wonder if perhaps this is all too difficult, or if there has been some mistake and your letter was never meant for you. But then you stop that thought, and instead you remind yourself of all the times that you have pushed on through adversity and overcome many challenges. 
you know that there is a strong resilience in you, and you are capable of doing whatever you set your mind to. A new surge of confidence bubbles in your stomach now, and with clear conviction, you give the order up. Your broomstick flies up effortlessly, landing perfectly in your palm. Your eyes widen in amazement, and you grip it tight, a beaming smile across your face. You realize that the words we use and the things we tell ourselves can be so powerful, and you vow from here on in to believe in what you are capable of and to treat yourself with kindness and compassion. Madame notices your success and gives an encouraging smile, spurring on the rest of the group who are still struggling. You look to your best friend who is having a hard time of it. Their broomstick hops up and down, reluctant to go all the way. They turn to you in desperation, asking if they are good enough to do this. You place a hand on their shoulder and tell them to take a breath, to relax and think of everything that they have achieved already in life. You remind them of the incredible person they have grown to be and encourage them to think of themselves as you think of them. They whisper a thank you and hover their hand over their broomstick. With a resounding up, their broom leaps off the floor and firmly lands in their palm. They turn to you, beaming with delight and the two of you share a warm embrace, reminding each other that no matter what, you will always be there to help. Slowly but surely, the entire class has managed to raise their broomsticks, and Madame, hands on hips, wearing a proud smile, advises you all that you are ready for the next step. She calls out to sit atop your broom and gently push off the ground, allowing yourself to hover a few inches above the grass. In perfect timing, you and your best friend straddle your brooms and gently kick off the floor, floating together happily. There is a new freedom flowing through you and you feel a deep sense of control over your body and your mind. You focus on the broom, feeling how it moves under you. If it tilts to the left, you learn to counter that with a shift to the right, and vice versa. You push the handle forward to lower yourself, and pull back gently to gain flight. Madame calls out to the group that the next rule of flying is to build the bond of trust between wizard and broomstick. In the same way that the wand chooses the wizard, you have to work to earn your broomstick's respect and gain its trust. Those of you that feel confident enough, she adds, will now follow me into the air for a little bit of fun. You are confident, and you are ready to follow Madame on a new magical adventure. With an excited smile to your best friend, you both pull back gently on your brooms, and along with a handful of other students, begin to soar up towards Madame, stopping just in line with the parapets of the castle walls.
Madame leads the way, gliding higher and swooping around the many towers of the magical castle. You feel as though you are entering a deep state of tranquility. All other thoughts, concerns or worries are melting away from you and fading out of sight. In this moment, nothing else matters. Already, it feels as though you are moving as one with your broomstick. You can't quite believe how natural this feels and how quickly it all makes sense. But then again, something inside of you has always been ready for this day. Madame flies with such elegance and grace. It is wonderful to witness. She guides you now above the tallest tower of the castle, and you circle it with ease. She calls out that students are free to explore on their brooms, but to rendezvous back on the ground in five minutes. She will keep a watchful eye over you all, keeping you safe and protected. The group peels off in different directions, leaving you and your best friend hovering above the castle. As you float up here, away from everything, you feel your mind clearing, and time itself seems to slow down. You take in the endless castle grounds, the forest, the lake, and the mountains in the distance. It is absolutely breathtaking. And then, as if out of thin air, your phoenix guardian swoops up from below you. They turn to face you, beating their wings in a steady rhythm, encouraging you to take flight with them. Without another hesitation, you follow behind the phoenix on a sweeping journey down the side of the castle. They rear their head and peel off to the right now, heading towards the enchanted forbidden forest. You glide over the top of the purple and orange leaves that ripple in the morning breeze as you follow the path of the phoenix. From here, you feel a pulsing aura emanating from the trees below. They appear to be calling out to you, almost, enticing you to visit the forbidden forest. Your phoenix companion swoops over you in a loop, their ruby and gold feathers glistening in the morning sun, and their huge elegant wings beating in a silent rhythm. Your best friend flies by your side, and together the three of you are the spirit of freedom.
In the next moment, the phoenix dives down over the trees and flies low across the grass. You follow behind, almost touching the daisies with your fingertips. They guide you now to the left of the forest and over the enormous, glistening lake. The mighty talons of the phoenix trace the water and you follow suit by dipping your hand into the cool, misty lake as you glide along its surface. Then you sit up straight on your broomstick and stretch your arms out wide, taking on the world in front of you. Your best friend joins in, and the two of you share an uncontrollable laughter, one that is brought on by an overwhelming joy. Suddenly, in the distance, and over to your right, you see the rest of your class gathering on the ground as the last few students lower themselves back down. And with that, the mighty phoenix banks to the right and lifts off the lake, guiding you back to your class. As you approach the group, the phoenix does one last loop around you, bidding you both a fond farewell before soaring up into the sky, disappearing above the clouds. As you gently bring your broomstick back down, you are met with cheers and applause from the students, and from Madame, who admits that in all her years of teaching, she has never seen a display quite like that. Certainly not from a first-time flyer. And before you know it, Madame is closing off the lesson congratulating you all on a brilliant first day. You are advised to leave your broomsticks with her, and when you return to your bedroom tonight, they will be waiting for you. You place your broom down with the rest and give a heartfelt thank you to Madame. Then you join the gaggle of students now making their way back into the castle, ready for your second lesson of the day, Transfiguration. Pockets of conversation mingle through the group, and an excited buzz is in the air, with students laughing and talking together, predicting what might be in store in your next class. You shuffle along, talking happily with your best friend, both of you recounting every little detail of the unforgettable experience you have just shared. You will always remember your first flight on a broomstick. The group rounds a corner and comes to a stop, arriving at a crooked wooden door that is open just a crack, a golden light pulsing from within. 
In the next moment, the door creaks open by itself, inviting you inside. One by one, you filter through the door and enter a crooked room outlined with wooden bookshelves. Two-person desks are spread evenly on the floor, and a blackboard stands at the very front. There are three huge windows running along the left wall, illuminating the room with a natural glow, where beads of gold dust dance in the sunlight. At the front of the classroom, Sitting atop the teacher's table is the grey and black cat that you remember from last night, guarding the great hall when you first entered the castle. It peers slowly around the students, watching very closely. Even though you've seen it once before, it is still magnificent to witness this cat leap forward and transform as quick as lightning into the now familiar deputy headmistress, who is also your professor. The same stern, cat-like eyes still pervade the room, but you can also sense a contained excitement within the headmistress. She might be just as eager as you to begin your training. You quietly take a seat with your best friend, second row back and perfectly in the middle. With all eyes on her, the professor starts by writing her name on the blackboard before outlining the lesson today. She will start by teaching you the very basics of transfiguration. You will then be able to practice a simple spell. And finally, she will show you the full potential of this magic at the end of the lesson. After a brief introduction, she calls out, Quills at the ready first, please. As the professor elaborates on the fundamental principles of transfiguration, the room begins to scribble away, taking notes. Transfiguration is the incredibly complex and difficult art of changing the appearance of an object or a person when more advanced. You could change something as simple as an ink pot into a mighty goblet, or in extreme cases it has been known for powerful wizards to transfigure entire houses, aeroplanes, or small forests. This, however, takes years upon years of dedication. It is incredibly difficult to master. This is because of the need for absolute accuracy with every spell, to avoid problematic complications. Many years ago, she adds, it was used as a substitute to detention, acting as a deterrent to those students wishing to misbehave. However, you will be relieved to know that the school has since stopped this practice as it was deemed immoral to transfigure naughty students into frogs for an hour. You share a cheeky look with your friend, imagining what they might look like as a little frog, before suppressing a quiet laugh. The professor reiterates to the class just how difficult and potentially dangerous this subject can be when misused. With a raised eyebrow, she emphasizes that anybody caught messing around with spells will be out of her class before they can say transfiguration. Now, if that's all clear, one's at the ready, she calls out. 
You slowly take your wand from your pocket and twiddle it between your thumb and finger. In front of you now, the professor says, has appeared a crisp brown autumn leaf, fallen fresh this morning. Today you will be changing this leaf into a beautiful pink blossom. Observe. You gaze in wonder as the professor taps her wand against the leaf and speaks the words Verto Floresco. The edges of the brown leaf begin to curl in on itself as it lifts up into the air. Then, in slow motion, the color fades from brown to a beautiful pastel pink and the soft petals unfurl one by one, revealing a perfect flower of blossom. With a subtle smile, she turns to the class and invites you all to give it a go. You hold your wand gently as the professor showed you, and you speak the incantation Verto Floresco. You wait a moment, but nothing happens. Then you watch in amazement as your best friend taps their wand confidently, speaking the spell. Instantly, the leaf on their table transforms, spinning by itself from brown to pink and unfolding into a beautiful blossom. With a new determination, you repeat the spell, Verto Floresco, but still nothing happens. Verto Floresco, the leaf is not moving. Verto Floresco, and then the leaf begins to change. Oh, but instead of a pink blossom, it turns a bright orange and blue dots appear across the fluorescent leaf. You look to your best friend in a slight panic, worried that you might never get it. Then the professor, who is pacing the aisle, overhears you and approaches with a soft smile and a new kindness in her eyes. Do not give up. She encourages with a hand on your shoulder. There isn't a great wizard alive who became that overnight. Failure needn't be as scary as it sounds. It can be a path to success, for without it we cannot hope to learn. She advises you to tighten your grip a little and to be patient with yourself. You have already proven yourself on a broomstick, she adds with a wink. Then your best friend leans over, reminding you of what you told them during your flying lesson. They have seen all the brilliant things you have accomplished, not only today, but throughout your life. They know what you are capable of and you are encouraged to think of yourself as they do, for that is your true value. The professor pats your back, telling you to give it another go. With a deep breath, you take a moment to allow any doubt or self-criticism to fall away now. You acknowledge how useless negativity is and that it only serves to hold us back. You allow a new positivity, self-belief and motivation to flow through you. And then, wand at the ready, you speak the incantation Verto Floresco. Your wand pulses in your hand, and a golden bead 
glows from the tip. The brown autumn leaf lifts into the air, and as it begins to twirl, you watch it transform into a rich pastel pink. One by one, the small pink petals unfold, until at last you are staring at a beautiful blossom flower that is radiating the faintest smell of a spring morning. You notice that you are smiling and the professor is beaming with pure pride, giving a little round of applause with her fingertips. Wonderfully done, she tells you, before striding back towards the front of the class. Your best friend puts their arm around you, giving you a proud smile and reminding you how grateful they are to have you with them through all of this. They are quite sure they never would have lifted their broomstick without your encouragement. You return the compliment and acknowledge that without a little help from your friend, you may have just given up on transfiguration before you even started. At the front of the room, the professor calls the attention of all students. Class is drawing to a close now, but before you go, she wants to show you the wonderful potential of this magic. And with that, she twirls her wand above her head and points it at the thick blackboard. Her forearm jerks and her wand emits a powerful blue light swirling around the blackboard. In the next moment, the blackboard begins to fold in on itself, disappearing into the floor. And then you watch, completely awestruck, as enormous tree roots sprout from the floor, and a thick trunk begins to spiral itself up toward the high ceiling. Then, in one magical movement, a vast collection of branches bloom from the top of the tree, and big, beautiful flowers blossom one by one in colors of blue, yellow, purple, and white. These delicate flowers are backed by emerald green leaves that give off a pulsing light and an enchanting radiance. The entire class sits in silence, wide-eyed and utterly speechless. The professor reminds you all that no matter how dark things might get, you can always create something beautiful for yourself. Each and every one of you can achieve this level of magic, she adds, if you only keep inspired. And with a tired smile now, the professor dismisses your class. You take one last look at this magical tree, pulsing with a golden green glow. You are filled with inspiration, a drive to be the best version of you that you can possibly be. 
and you remind yourself to never give up despite the difficulties you may face as these will only help you to grow. As you leave the classroom, side by side with your friend, you realize it is time to visit your gentle giant, ready for your next lesson, care of magical creatures. With a renewed excitement, you wander through the castle halls and out of a large wooden door. You are met by the mid-afternoon sun beaming down on you. There is the sound of autumn birds chirping in the distance as they dart across the sky, and a gentle breeze drifts across your face. On the far side of the lake, near the entrance of the forbidden forest, is the giant's hut you can see your big friend shuffling nervously, preparing for his next class, and you ponder what magic might be in store for you now, under the guidance of your gentle giant. And then your thoughts suddenly turn to Daphne, the little house elf who helped you this morning. You cannot help but smile, thinking of your new friend, wondering how her day has been, and you hope to see her again soon. You arrive at a small clearing just outside the stone hut of the giant, where more and more students begin to gather with a quiet anticipation in the air. A huge black dog, a Great Dane, sleeps on the steps of the hut, his paw twitching as he dreams away his lazy afternoon. Just then, the giant calls for attention and gives you a quick smile before addressing the class instructing you all to follow his lead. He explains en route that for the first part of the lesson today, you will be taking care of a very special but currently endangered magical creature that lives on the borders of the forest. The giant reiterates the importance of not going into the forest itself. You will go in together soon, but not today. It's known as the Forbidden Forest for a reason, he adds. You arrive instead at a cluster of smaller trees on the very edge of the forest. Already you can feel a powerful radiance coming from the dark depths of the woodland. The forbidden forest is calling out to you. The giant snaps his fingers, bringing the focus back to him. Then he gently taps his knuckles against the little tree in front of you. In that moment, a collection of tiny eyes peep out from the nooks and crannies in the bark of the tree, gazing out with innocence and wonder. Then comes a flurry of furry feet carrying little round bodies across the tree trunk. These fluffy animals, no bigger than a strawberry, are pulsing in colors of yellow, green, purple, or blue. 
you notice that their stomachs glow in a whirlpool of gold, giving off a soft, heavenly light. The reason for this, the giant explains, is a little-known magical herb called Aurum folium, a plant that gives off a unique golden glow, and when ingested, provides these little animals with a warm golden light in the pit of their stomach that looks especially beautiful at night. The herb grows deep within the forest and is eaten by only one other animal, the firefly. These delightful furry creatures hop around in a sleepy daze giving little yawns and almost tripping over themselves. The danger for these little creatures, the giant tells you, is that they're always in a state of being half asleep, unaware of potential threat, and so they have been chased off by other animals and pushed to the very edge of the forest. They can only survive in the bark of enchanted trees, so now it's up to him and the rest of you to feed and care for them, so that they may continue to live and grow happily. He collects the fluffy animals now on his huge palm and forearm, and tells you all to take one each if you will. One of the little creatures the smallest of the bunch is gazing up at you with innocent eyes, begging you to pick them. You cannot resist their charm, and you take them up in your hands, already thinking of a name for your new friend. Their soft fur sends a beautiful tingle across your palms and their glowing tummy seems to radiate a warmth now that passes through your entire body, and you are washed with a peaceful comfort. You share a smile with your best friend, who is chuckling away at their own fluffy animal that appears to be tickling their hands. In the next moment, the giant hands you a small vial of gold liquid, and the little ball of fluff in your hand seems to know exactly what this is. It begins to hop on both feet and brushes itself against your palm, eager for dinner. The giant tells you that this is the aurum folium leaf ground into a fine gold dust and mixed with water, so as to be easily digested by the animals. With your new furry friend in one hand, and the golden vial in the other, you begin to feed them slow and steady as they take the vial in their mouth and gulp away in a sleepy bliss. You realize how wonderful it feels to give back, and to take care of this tiny creature that truly needs your help. Despite our own difficulties, the giant says, there is a real purpose to be found in helping others, especially those less fortunate. You enjoy this precious moment and resolve to take this beautiful feeling with you wherever you go, and to lead your life with love. As the tiny glowing ball of fluff in your hand gulps its last drop of elixir, they flop backwards, feet in the air, and begin to snore as quiet as a dormouse. The gentle giant watches on proudly, giving a low chuckle and congratulating each and every one of you for taking to this so well. 
He instructs you now, when you are ready, to place these animals back into their little homes in the tree. You take your new friend, now fast asleep, and give them one last stroke on the head. You lift them back up into the tree, putting them safely inside a deep, cozy nook. You watch their tiny tummy lift and drop in total bliss as you leave them now to enjoy their rest. The giant tells you all that you can come back any time and visit these little creatures whenever you like. One last treat, he calls out, before you go. And with that, he gives a low whistle, aimed deep into the forest. And what you are about to experience will stay with you forever. Right before your eyes, galloping from the wood, appears a beautiful white unicorn, glistening with stardust in its mane. It gives off its own magical aura that illuminates the tree line. The entire group gasps, and you are utterly speechless. The unicorn stops next to the giant, fluttering its tail and bowing its head. There is something so wondrous about this creature. They hold a deep, powerful magic within them, and have been a guardian of this land for a thousand years. Your gentle giant introduces her as Olwyn, queen of all unicorns in the forest, and his very dear friend. And just then, this magical unicorn looks directly at you. Your stomach flutters with butterflies as Olwyn gently scrapes her hoof on the floor and bows her head to you. You return the bow, and the rest of your class takes a step back. Your best friend squeezes your arm, urging you to go forward. You take a slow step and hold your arm out in front of you. Keep your palm up, the giant whispers. Let her come to you. You stop and take a deep breath, trying to show Olwyn that you mean her no harm. And then, in a slow, shuffling step, this majestic unicorn edges closer and closer, until, at last, her soft head brushes against the palm of your hand, and you gently stroke her head and scratch behind her ears. She moves her head over your shoulder, and you embrace Olwyn now, holding her tight around her chest as she rests her head upon your back. You breathe as one with this magical unicorn, and already you can feel her powers of healing at work. You feel the warmth of her heart relaxing each and every muscle in your body now, filling you with hope, comfort, and a deep, deep love. Olwen will protect you now and guide your way She will help you to heal and to let go of any burdens that weigh you down, allowing you to be free, confident, 
and most of all, happy. You feel completely safe and you know that everything will be okay. In the next moment, the giant picks you up and places you gently on Olwyn's back as she flicks her head up in excitement. Now, the giant says with a smile, hold on tight. And with that, he gives Olwyn a gentle tap and she begins to trot down towards the lake, carrying you effortlessly on her back as you gently hold around her chest, an unstoppable smile beaming on your face. Behind you, the gaggle of students fades out of sight, and you lean over to Olwyn and whisper a heartfelt thank you. You cannot believe that she picked you but you are so glad that she did. It's as if you are gliding over a huge, soft cloud, with the cool breeze tracing your skin, and the beautiful Olwyn carrying you all the way around this enormous lake. You have never felt more free in your entire life. To your right, you see the majestic castle standing high and proud, backed by the late afternoon sun. In the next moment, your eyes widen with amazement as in front of you, out of thin air, appears the little house elf, Daphne. She sits atop Olwyn and turns her head to you, a huge smile on her face. Her big, round eyes gaze up at you in wonder as her ears flap gently with the steady gallop. Daphne tells you that every chance she had today, she has been checking in on you, watching from afar. She admits to hiding at the back of your class during transfiguration, and watching from the bushes as you flew your first broomstick. And after witnessing your beautiful connection with Olwyn, she couldn't resist surprising you. Daphne goes on to tell you just how proud she is of all that you have achieved today. She has seen just how resilient you can be, how kind, passionate and motivated you are, and how excited she is for your future. Then her voice softens, and she reminds you that she will always be there for you whenever you need her, and that she is so lucky to call you her friend. Your arms wrap around her tummy as you ride, and you whisper to her that you couldn't wish for a better guardian, and that you are so grateful to have met her. Daphne responds by squeezing your arm tight and you feel one or two teardrops fall on your hand. Together you gallop around the glistening lake and share an infectious laughter as you enjoy each other's wonderful company and celebrate the beautiful Olwyn who is taking you for the ride of your life.
you enjoy this moment of pure bliss and remind yourself how grateful you are for all those who are special to you. As you round the end of the lake, bathing in the low sun, Olwyn steers to your right and heads back towards the giant's hut. Before you arrive, Daphne politely invites you to meet her by the lake after class for a sunset picnic. And be sure to bring your friend, she adds. You accept without hesitation, and with a click of her fingers, she disappears once again into thin air. As Olwyn brings herself to a slow canter and enters the clearing, you are met with a collection of beaming smiles. Your gentle giant lifts you off the unicorn and announces that class is dismissed. As the students drift off back to the castle, you turn and give Olwyn one final stroke, whispering to her that you hope to meet again soon. She ruffles her head on your arm before galloping off back into the forbidden forest. Just then, your best friend races up to you, giving you a warm hug, telling you how incredible that was to witness. You squeeze them tight and tell them of Daphne's invitation. Your friend gives a wide smile excited to finally meet the lovely little elf. The gentle giant clears his throat, and as you turn to look at him, he holds out his huge arms with a proud, mischievous smile. As he pulls you in to a warm embrace, he tells you that Olwyn has never taken to a student before, and that letting you ride her was actually a bit of a spontaneous decision. You thank him with all your heart for the most magical memory that you will never forget. You invite the giant to join you for your evening picnic, and with a sheepish smile, surprised to have been asked, he gladly accepts, and the three of you wander off down towards the lake that is now pulsing with a golden shimmer, backed by the majestic castle. Classes, for the most part, are done for the day, and in the distance, many students disappear inside, ready for another magical feast. Only this time, you won't be joining as you have something even more special planned. As you draw nearer to the lake, you see the faint silhouette of the tiny elf, Daphne, who is now carrying a huge wicker basket, holding it with both hands, struggling under the weight. Your gentle giant approaches the little elf, and with his first finger, lifts the basket from her arms and begins to prepare your picnic. He waves a red and white blanket onto the floor and unpacks the basket bit by bit. He greets Daphne as an old friend and she gives a happy chuckle, telling you they have been companions for many years now. In the next moment, 
you reveal your best friend and introduce them to this little elf. Your friend crouches on one knee and holds out a hand, but Daphne skips the handshake and dives straight in for a huge hug, exclaiming that anyone who is a friend of yours is a friend of Daphne's. The little elf has prepared a mini buffet for you, and as the giant unpacks the endless basket of food, you are met with the smell of hot pastry and freshly baked goods, coupled with sandwiches, fresh fruit, and of course, pudding, with ice-cold drinks to wash it all down. Your lovely group gets comfortable on the big red blanket, enjoying the sudden peace that surrounds you, and the gentle lapping of the lake as you bask in the setting sun, glowing in a golden red. You pick and choose little bits of the buffet, and once your plate is full, you begin to enjoy each delicacy prepared by Daphne, and you thank her for this wonderful feast. As you eat, you suddenly get the urge to cool off a little. You remove your shoes and your socks and dip your tired feet into the cool waters of the lake. All of your friends follow suit, and you sit in a line on the bank of the water. Instantly, you feel a beautiful, cool sensation swirling around your toes and up into your ankles. This refreshing feeling trickles up into your legs and begins to cool down your entire body allowing you to breathe slow and deep, entering a state of pure relaxation. This delicious feast, coupled with the soft heat of the setting sun and the cool waters of the lake, is a perfect combination, finished off by the wonderful company around you as you all sit in a peaceful silence now, the kind only possible between true friends. The golden red sun is halfway behind the tree line now, and a crimson glow ripples across the lake, creating specks of stardust that flicker on the water. You remember how only yesterday you journeyed across the other side of this lake, approaching the mighty castle underneath a blanket of starlight. You realize how far you have already come since then, and your thoughts turn now to the wonderful day that you have had. You quietly reflect on everything you have been through, thinking of the valuable lessons you have learned, not only for magic, but for life itself. Flying has taught you the value of courage and confidence. It has encouraged you to believe in yourself without hesitation, it has opened your eyes to the wonderful experience of flight and exposed the beauty of magic that surrounds you every day. You reminisce on your adventure with your phoenix guardian, a wonderful new companion who is now no doubt perched on the shoulder of the kind old headmaster enjoying a magical feast. Transfiguration posed many challenges, 
But through all this you persevered and triumphed. You vow to yourself to not be afraid of making mistakes, to be more patient with yourself and to embrace the unexpected as part of this wonderful journey. And so long as we never give up and listen to our hearts, there will always be doors open to us. Care of magical creatures has given you a chance to reconnect with the beauty and wonder of nature. You were able to give back and to care for a creature that needed your help. You realize that it is a different type of magic to help those in need. And through this lesson, you intend to do that much more. You were also able to meet one of the most beautiful animals you have ever seen. The wonderful unicorn, Olwyn. Another guardian of this enchanted world and another guardian of you. You take a moment to look at your friends enjoying the sunset, and you feel a deep gratitude for each and every one of them. Your best friend gives you a smile, telling you that there is nobody else they would rather share this moment with. Daphne holds your hand now, whispering in your ear that no matter what, she will always be there for you, cheering you on, and there to lend a helping hand if ever you should need it. The gentle giant gives you a mischievous smile, letting you know that you are welcome at his hut any time and he will make you one of his famous stews. Not quite as good as little Daphne's cooking, he adds, but not too shabby, if he does say so himself. And finally, ever present in your thoughts, is the black and white sleepy cat, without whom you may never have found the magical alley in the first place and who was there to see you off on your adventure. You tell the giant that you wish that naughty cat was here now, and he gives a nod agreeing with you. Then he suggests that maybe one day soon you can go back to the alley together and visit your wonderful friend. You would like that very much, you tell him, very much indeed. And just then, in a crimson flash, the last light of the setting sun disappears beyond the horizon, and the first of the silver stars begin to pepper the rich purple and blue sky. Your best friend quickly reminds you that it is time for your final lesson of the day. Despite feeling completely relaxed and very sleepy already, you cannot deny the lingering excitement still running through you as you anticipate the magic of astronomy. As the little elf casts a spell to dry off your feet, and packs away the picnic basket, your gentle giant stands himself up and bids you all a warm good night. He will see you again very soon, he adds, and he strides away back to his warm and cosy hut, ready to turn in for the night. Daphne suddenly asks if she can show you something that she has never shown anyone. As you shuffle on your shoes, 
you tell her that her secret is safe with you. And then she takes your hand and tells you to trust her. In the next moment, you feel yourself lift ever so slightly above the ground. Daphne begins to climb her feet as if walking up an invisible staircase, and you float up alongside her, higher and higher above the castle grounds. You are becoming completely weightless and free. It's as if you are inside an enchanted bubble, drifting up into the sky, approaching the highest peak of the castle, the Astronomy Tower. There is a special kind of magic at work here, a magic that only these wonderful elves possess. It is a privilege to witness. The view over the twilight castle and the lake reflecting the light of the moon is truly magical. As you float up further into the night, you approach the walled parapet of the Astronomy Tower. You drift over the wall and land perfectly on your feet. You thank Daphne for all of her help and she gives you both a tight hug at the knees before whispering that she will be back after your lesson, and disappearing once again out of sight. Her favourite trick, you think to yourself with a smile. For a brief moment, you are the only two people on the tower. But suddenly, the door swings open, and out comes a tall, dark and slender witch with eagle eyes of brown and braided hair in a soft bun. She glides over the floor and has an unrivaled elegance. Her sapphire robe drapes over her wrists and sweeps across the concrete effortlessly. Behind the professor comes the rest of your class, wide-eyed and eager to begin. Took a shortcut, did we? The professor asks with a knowing smile. With a shuffle of her cloak, a wand appears from her sleeve, and she casts a swirling spell on the tower. In the next moment, a collection of blankets and pillows are spread out evenly on the stone floor, and a blue shimmer covers the night sky. Tonight, she says, will be a nice introduction to the vast subject of astronomy. You are encouraged to find a blanket and lie back, allowing your eyes to adjust. As you find a blanket next to your best friend, the professor explains that tonight you will gaze at the constellations and see where they take you, as they guide you on your own unique journey. This is about becoming one with the stars, she says, so that we may study them with a deeper understanding in the weeks to come. Then, almost in an instant, the night sky opens up, revealing itself in all of its wonder and intricate detail. Shooting stars are passing through the blue and silver glitter. 
Some are brief, but others follow the full curvature of the Earth, passing over this protective sphere at a smooth, steady pace, illuminating a pathway in the sky. Allow your body and your mind to soften, the professor repeats, and for your imagination to come alive. Then you watch in amazement as four constellations begin to reveal themselves, pulsing in colors of red, green, yellow, and blue, backed by the infinite black beyond. The first constellation to come into focus is a red lion peppered with golden starlight. Then appears a blue and bronze eagle soaring high above the lion. To the left emerges a green serpent shape encased in a silver stardust. And finally you see a beautiful yellow badger, peppered with black and white. These are the constellations of the four wizarding houses that govern the school. They were made using powerful magic, where the four founders combined their talents to leave a permanent reminder for generations to come. You can almost see where the spell hit the sky all those years ago and branched out to create these four huge crests now pulsing bright above you. And now, the professor adds, it is time for you to go on your own unique journey through the stars. Allow them to take you wherever they want to, and trust in this enchanted universe. Then, as if in your own private theatre of starlight, the colourful constellations begin to fade, and a very personal display begins just for you. Through the crystal zigzags and the looping patterns of the silver stars, you begin to follow your own life's journey in a vast web across the sky. As the patterns become more rich and embedded, there are snapshot images and pictures in the stars, showing your deep history as you relive all the wonderful memories in your life. Everything that has happened has brought you here and has shaped the kind, generous and brilliant person that you are today. Many of the silver lines cross over each other, symbolizing a new friendship or a special bond. And where the lines meet, you see flashes of those that are most dear to you, smiling down at you from the enchanted twilight sky. No matter where life takes you, all of these people will be watching over you, 
and all of your happiest memories will stay with you forever. Then you suddenly see all of your hopes and dreams spread out in front of you, and you feel grateful for all the wonderful opportunities that still lie ahead of you. You know it is never too late, and you feel a powerful resolution to make the most of everything that life has to offer, and to go forward with an open heart, full of love, and guided by the desire to simply be good. You feel so thankful for all the beautiful things that you do have, and for all the people that you have been so lucky to meet and to share life with. This enormous collection of beautiful memories, important people and inspiration surrounds you now in a protective twilight dome of shimmering blue. You realize that there is no time for worry or negativity in your life. There is no utility or comfort to be found in this. And as you take in this unforgettable display you allow all the colours of the night to swirl around you and cleanse your mind of any remaining thoughts. This angelic starlight will heal your heart, rejuvenate your body and clear your mind, allowing you to let go of all those things that no longer serve you, and to go forward now with positivity and hope. These wonderful feelings wash over you as you give yourself over completely to the beautiful night sky. As this starlight display comes to an end, you are left with the soft glitter of the night, guarded by the pearl moon that beams down in a spotlight, perfectly covering the tower. As your sleepy eyes look around, you realize that your lesson has finished. Only you and your best friend remain, and the professor watching over you with care. As you come back into a lucid state, the professor whispers that you have a visitor, and she bids you a wonderful good night before sweeping through the door and out of sight. And then you hear the soothing voice of Daphne asking you to be still now and trust her once again. In the next moment, Daphne clicks her fingers and you feel yourself floating as if being carried on a soft, comfortable bed. The little elf guides you now down the long spiral steps of the tower 
keeping you perfectly afloat and relaxed. Daphne explains that a powerful elven enchantment lies upon you, and for the time being you are invisible, as if under a magical cloak. This way she can sneak you back into your room without any distraction and let you drift off in peace. As you float through a stone archway, you are greeted by the sound of a low crackling fire, a familiar ticking clock, and the scribbling of students finishing assignments for the morning. Daphne gently guides you through the muffled hubbub of the common room as you float effortlessly on your back. You cannot help but smile ear to ear as this wonderful magic unfolds. You slowly drift over to the next corridor and she guides you down towards your bedroom at last. Before you know it, you are being gently lowered onto your bed. Outside the window, you can hear the soothing sound of falling rain that has bubbled up from the clouds all of a sudden. Daphne places a warm hand on your forehead and murmurs a low spell. This will allow you to completely let go and enter a deep sleep, dreaming of the most beautiful things. In that moment, you feel yourself sink deeper and deeper into the mattress as you become heavier and heavier. A beautiful vibration begins to ripple through your body. You feel your forehead letting go of all tension as each muscle relaxes now. Your brow becomes soft and free. Your cheeks let go and your lips soften. Your jaw relaxes and the muscles in your face become warm and soft. You feel your shoulders and your neck releasing all tension as each muscle relaxes completely like a soft butter melting. This wonderful sensation runs down your arms, relaxing your upper arm, releasing your elbows, softening your forearms and allowing your hands to be heavy. This new warmth trickles up and down your back, softening your spine, and all the muscles in your back are letting go now. Your buttocks muscles become heavy and free from all tension. The muscles in your thighs are warm and soft. Your knees are loose and the tension in your calves is melting away. The tops of your feet tingle with delight. The soles of your feet 
and your toes become soft now and filled with warmth. You lie here now in a state of total tranquility, blanketed with peace. Daphne bids you a gentle good night, reassuring you that she is not far away. You are filled with a deep relaxation. The gentle sound of the rain only adds to your comfort. And now, with nothing left to think at all, you allow yourself to completely let go and give yourself over to the wonderful night as you dream of beautiful things. It is a cool, damp morning at the end of autumn, and the lapping of the rain against your window causes you to stir, blinking open your eyes. The rich crackle of the furnace in the middle of your room radiates the perfect warmth, blanketing you in comfort and peace. The sleepy haze that washes over you as you curl up under your thick duvet is utterly enchanting. There is something different about your room this morning. The wonderful smell of cinnamon and pumpkin spice mingles through the air, and decorations for Halloween cover the walls and the shelves. Small floating candles drift above you. Their flames flicker in green, red, yellow, and blue, providing a soft kaleidoscope of color that shimmers over the ceiling. The curtains and cushions are now decorated in purple, orange, and black and are dotted with animated pumpkins pulling different expressions and silly skeletons dancing across the fabric. As you enjoy the sounds of fire and rain mixing together in a perfect duet, you realize how quickly you have adjusted to life here in this enchanted castle that you call home. It has only been a few weeks since you began your wizarding journey, but already you have learnt so much. It feels like only yesterday that you were starting your first day here. You remember meeting the beautiful house elf Daphne, who is now a very dear friend of yours. After a breakfast feast, the kind old headmaster gifted you your wonderful broomstick, which is now propped up by your bedside table. You reminisce on your first flight on this enchanted broom as you took a magical journey over the castle and were guided by your phoenix guardian over the treetops and across the lake, all with your best friend by your side. Your first lesson in transfiguration was unforgettable. Watching the professor transform a simple blackboard into a mighty tree, dotted with pulsing green leaves and colorful flowers, and full of enchantment, wonder, and inspiration. The first lesson with your gentle giant saw you taking care of a beautiful fluffy animal 
no bigger than a strawberry. You remember how quickly you fell in love with your tiny new friend, and since that lesson you have been back many times to check in on them, and each day you visit you are greeted with their usual excited hop and their sleepy innocent eyes. It was in this lesson that you met Olwyn, queen of the unicorns of the forest. Olwyn soothed your heart, melting away all your worries and filling you with love and hope before taking you on an unforgettable ride around the lake. Then came astronomy, where you witnessed a beautiful starlight display, showcasing all of your wonderful memories and the brilliant people you have been able to share life with. You are still in awe that somehow you were chosen for this journey. And now, after an adventure to remember, you are finally here, right where you belong. And now, as you quietly reflect, your heart is full of gratitude to be able to be here in the castle of your dreams and to surround yourself with magic each and every day. You are filled with love for all the wonderful friends that you have met along the way. But there is one companion that you miss dearly, the black and white sleepy cat. Without this precious animal, you never would have found the magical alley in the first place and started your journey into magic. With a quiet resolve, you tell yourself that one day soon you will go back to that enchanted alley and pay a visit to your oldest guardian. Just then, you notice your best friend stirring they sit up in bed at the opposite side of the room. You share a quiet, mischievous look, seemingly knowing what the other is thinking. A common theme with you two. In the next moment, you hear a very familiar humming approaching down the corridor. You and your friend share a wide-eyed smile, as this can mean only one thing. Daphne has arrived. Through the tall stone archway, you see the tiny body of the elf appear, a morning glow radiating from her eyes. Daphne wears a tall witch's hat almost as big as her, that flops to one side of her head, only adding to her innocence. Then you notice in her mouth a pair of huge fake fangs, so that when she gives you a proud smile, you are met by the sweetest little vampire you have ever seen, and the three of you erupt in laughter. Daphne admits that she couldn't resist a bit of fun this morning. Floating through the air behind your little elf is a small tray painted with orange pumpkins. Atop the tray is a hot teapot and three small cups. Daphne pours you both a drink and floats them over to you, insisting that it is the perfect morning for a cosy cup of her homemade elven tea. Upon this brew is a powerful enchantment that will keep you warm for the entire day. Just then, you hear your animal waking up beside you. 
you reach over, unlock their cage, and gently pick them up, placing them on the bed as they snuggle up on your lap. As you enjoy this hot elven tea, you feel your lips tingle and all the muscles in your face relax. Your jaw becomes loose and filled with a beautiful warmth. The warmth travels down into your chest and lights a tiny fire in the pit of your stomach that will bubble away for many hours, keeping you comfortable and warm on this cold, damp autumn day. You stroke your animal now and sip Daphne's brew, which tastes even more delicious with every mouthful. If you had it your way, you would stay like this all day, talking with your best friend and your little elf, a hot brew in your hand and the bedroom fire blanketing you in warmth finished off by the soothing rain lapping on the window. Today, however, you have another magical adventure ahead of you, just waiting to begin. Officially, students should have the day off. However, the potions master has insisted on a class this morning and has described the celebrations as quite unnecessary and rather inconvenient. But after this lesson, the time is all yours, and you ponder where this beautiful day might take you. From the corner of your eye, you see Daphne produce two envelopes of cream parchment sealed with a red wax crest and addressed to each of you. You open the letter and unfold the parchment. All students are hereby invited to attend the ghostly breakfast banquet in the Great Hall for a magical morning of food, frivolity and festive fun. It will be a celebration to remember. I hope to see you there. Signed, your headmaster. As you finish the last drop of your enchanted elven tea, Daphne floats the cups back over to her tray. And, telling you she will find you again later, she shuffles away down the corridor humming her favourite tune. With a new excitement for the ghostly breakfast banquet, you place your animal on your bedside table, hop out of bed and quickly change into your wizarding robes. You carefully tie your tie and remove your shoes from the rack over the fire. As you slip them on, a surge of warmth pulses through the soles of your feet and all the way into your toes. And now, wand in pocket and fully robed, you wander down the corridor, through the now empty common room and out into the echoey halls of the castle. As you close the door behind you, you are greeted by the kind old headmaster coming around the corner to your right. Ah, a happy coincidence, he says, peering over his spectacles with the ever-present hint of mischief. I have someone here who would like to see you. Your eyes flick to his shoulder, and there sits your phoenix guardian, gazing at you with their gentle, watery eyes. 
They have missed you dearly since your adventure together, the headmaster admits, and he gently lowers the phoenix onto your shoulder now. You stroke the innocent creature under the chin, letting out a chuckle as it brushes its soft feathers on your neck. You whisper a promise to fly with them again soon, for you are quite ready for another adventure, and the phoenix gives an eager flutter of their feathers. They shuffle down your arm, and you cradle them gently as they slip effortlessly into a morning nap. The headmaster offers to escort you to the great hall, and you can sense the excitement within him awaiting the ghostly banquet. You follow behind the flowing robe of the headmaster, a rich, deep merlot with threads of silver and gold. Right now, His appearance is that of an angelic guardian, watching over you and guiding your way. To be in his presence is a true comfort, and you know that whenever you return to this castle, he will always be here for you. As you reach the huge doors of the great hall, The headmaster gently sways his wand, and they swing open with ease. The great hall is almost unrecognizable, as a whole new fleet of decorations pepper the walls and the tables. As you gaze around the room, you see pumpkin lanterns bobbing up and down in the air, each carved with their own unique expression. There are orange and black drapes lining the room, with purple lanterns dotted through the drapes. They pulse with a beautiful radiance in mini spotlights around the hall. Every single ghost of the castle is here now. Some are mingling around the room, interacting with students. Others are dancing in a slow waltz. The proud countess appears to be leading the proceedings, and she is joined by the grey ladies of the castle. A group of ghostly rogues are apple-bobbing in the corner, cheered on by a gaggle of students. There is a fleet of knights on horseback galloping above you, and the mischievous court jester is floating around the hall, playing pranks on the students or showing off with magic tricks. There is a ghostly musician sitting atop one of the tables. He wears a shabby suit and a battered old top hat as he plays a peaceful tune that perfectly rounds off the ghoulish, festive atmosphere. If you didn't know any better, you would think it was the middle of the night, for above you, The enchanted ceiling reveals a world of starlight. The white orb of the moon beams down, with wisps of thin grey cloud drifting across its face, coupled with the silhouette of many bats flitting across the sky. The huge windows around the hall have been enchanted now, too and a silver moonlight beams in, shimmering through the ghosts and giving them an ethereal, starlight quality. The many fires atop the stone gargoyles are burning in emerald and sapphire, 
and there is the smell of hot pastries, pumpkin soup, and baked apples with cinnamon drifting through the air. These wonderful smells ripple around you in a thin orange and white haze, filling you with comfort and a newfound hunger. Truly, this wondrous castle never fails to surprise you. Even the sleepy phoenix in your arms has stirred now, and their head flicks around, taking in the vast enchanted hall that has been transformed into a Halloween haven. Just then, the headmaster takes the phoenix from your arms and releases them into the air. The entire hall turns in unison to watch this mighty animal swoop around the room, beating its powerful wings and almost putting out the many fires dotted around the hall. The phoenix spirals up towards the ceiling and into the night sky. For a brief moment, it takes the place of the moon and the hall erupts in a shimmer of ruby and gold as this mighty creature opens its wings and ruffles its feathers in a slow ripple. A golden red starlight dances across your eyes and glistens on the walls. The headmaster gives a proud smile and a happy tear fills his eye. He leans over to you and with a wink he whispers for you to watch closely now. Suddenly, the phoenix dives down, flying straight for the headmaster. In the next moment, the headmaster brings his hands together above his head. In a sudden flash, both he and the phoenix erupt in a magical flame, disappearing out of sight. Then, not a moment too late, a new flame appears, illuminating the far end of the hall. As the light fades, you see the headmaster sitting comfortably atop his golden throne, calm and unfazed, his phoenix companion perched on his shoulder. The great hall erupts in a thunderous applause, awestruck by the incredible magic you have just witnessed. The headmaster looks at you with his bright blue eyes, glowing with a youthful radiance. He raises his eyebrow, giving you a mischievous smile. As the music picks up again and the banquet continues on, you make your way to your house table, ready for a hearty breakfast. Before you can take your seat, you are met with a huge hand on your shoulder. You turn to see your gentle giant beaming down at you over his frizzy beard. With a happy heart, you throw yourself into a huge embrace and the giant squeezes you tight. He kneels down to face you now and with a sheepish smile, the giant invites both of you to his hut this evening to enjoy a cozy night by a warm fire and a bowl of his famous stew. Little Daphne will be there too 
and if you're lucky, he might just have a surprise for you, he adds, tapping his nose with his giant finger. You share an excited smile with your best friend and accept the giant's invitation. And promising not to delay your breakfast any longer, he bids you a good morning and strides back to the professor's table, giving off a happy chuckle. Atop your house table is a collection of silver candelabras, each with three candles alternating in orange and purple. The flames ripple in slow motion, and this enchanted wax does not melt. The candelabras divide enormous trays of food that are piled high with sweet and savory bites ready to satisfy any magical stomach. There are huge cast iron cauldrons floating above your table with giant ladles stirring by themselves. They bubble away gently, giving off a wonderful array of tantalizing smells. On the trays are hot pumpkin pasties butter beer pancakes, cheesy broomsticks, and mini sausage rolls in the shape of little ghosts. There are bowls of Halloween stew and crispy hot pies stacked three feet high. The dessert platters carry twirling toffee, chocolate frogs, licorice wands, and sugar quills. There are purple pastries in the shape of a witch's hat, filled with clotted cream and pieces of strawberry. There are baked apples with cinnamon and fresh homemade crumble. You also find more unusual treats. Cupcakes in many different colors are each topped with a jelly eye that peers around the room nervously, wondering where the next greedy hand might come from. There are little round golden candies with gold leaf wings darting around the table as fast as lightning, and you watch a handful of students desperately trying to catch one. On the table are enormous silver jugs each giving off a light steam and coupled with the smell of cinnamon hot chocolate, spicy witch's brew, or mulled wine. As you pick and choose from this magnificent feast, you remember to whisper a heartfelt thank you to Daphne, who has no doubt played a huge part in making this beautiful breakfast banquet. Your chosen drink floats over in its jug and pours itself into your goblet without spilling a single drop. You tuck into all the delicious food and you enjoy dipping in and out of the quiet conversation that drifts around the table. You allow these enchanted surroundings to wash over you, feeling immersed in the Halloween festivities and the wonderful magic that it brings. You listen to the peaceful music echoing through the hall and you watch the happy ghosts talking and laughing or playing games together. Your friend leans over and asks if you would like to wander down to the wizarding village after potions and visit the cozy tavern there. You smile, admitting that you would like nothing better than to talk the day away with your best friend over a nice cold butterbeer. Mm. 
In the next moment, you notice that more ghostly musicians have begun to join in, and the music changes to a lively jig. The great hall bursts with a new life now, as students, professors, and ghosts whirl around, all dancing together. The headmaster and mistress clap along, and even your gentle giant taps his enormous foot, slightly out of time, but with a huge happy smile on his face. If you like, you can join in with this festive celebration and mingle among your fellow wizards and the ghosts of the castle. Or if you'd prefer today, you can sit with your friend and simply take in this wonderful moment, noticing all the different ghostly figures dancing through the hall and enjoying the perfect atmosphere. The song finishes with a rapturous applause that echoes through the hall, signalling the end of this ghostly banquet, a truly majestic and magical feast. As you finish the last few bites of this beautiful food, the trays disappear out of sight and you are left once again with the bare wooden tables. The charming ghosts of the castle bid you all a good morning, and you wave farewell as they drift out of the hall. Some go through the walls and the windows, others sink down through the floor or up into the night sky above. As the rest of your class begins to pack up, you and your best friend follow along in the middle of your group, reminiscing on the ghostly banquet that you will never forget as you file out of the Great Hall. There is a hushed conversation running through the group, and you ponder on the magic that awaits you now in your first and only lesson of the day, potions. Before you know it, you wander down a set of concrete steps, arriving at a small wooden door hidden in one corner of the castle. The door unlocks and creaks open by itself. And as you all shuffle inside, it swings itself closed behind you. The room is quiet and still, full of a deep enchanted magic. There are no windows here and the space is lit by a soft lamplight filling the air. There are two cauldrons bubbling away at the front of the class, atop magical blue flames. The ladles stir by themselves, and a wave of steam gives off a silver haze that drifts through the room. The classroom is bordered by wooden shelves housing an infinite number of glass jars, each one containing a unique magical ingredient. Some of the jars are pulsing with green, blue or red, 
giving the room an unusual blend of color. In a locked cabinet to your left, there are hundreds of potion bottles, varying in shape, size, and color, all stopped with cork, and each with their own label, giving the name and effects of said potions. You make your way to one of the square tables at the back of the class, and you sit next to your best friend atop high wooden stools. In the next moment, the door swings open, and in strides the professor. He dons a dark cloak with a smart black doublet underneath. His pale face is curtained by straight black hair that blends into his robe. As he reaches the front of the class, he peers around the room over his long, hooked nose, fixing his eyes on each and every one of you with a slow, suspicious gaze. He may not be the most approachable professor that you have, but he is an incredibly gifted potions master, and if the rumors are true, then his ability with a wand is not to be reckoned with. After a long silence, his monotonous tone echoes through the room. There will be no foolish wand waving today. I do not care if it is Halloween. Books at the ready and turn to page 394. You rummage in your bag and remove your book, flipping through the pages as quickly as you can, a wave of nerves in your stomach. The page reveals a recipe for a powerful sleeping draft. It is difficult to make and requires accuracy and attention to detail. The book shows a moving watercolor picture and the potion is purple and runny with streaks of silver running through. Today's task is to brew the perfect draft of this potion and with that the professor wraps himself in his dark cloak telling you that he will be testing all the potions at the end before uttering one word. Begin. He paces around the tables now, observing each and every one of you very carefully. Written in calligraphy is a list of ingredients, and you make a mental note of things to collect. Ten valerian leaves, fifty grams of wormwood, 300 milliliters of silver rose water, seven drops of Bavarian dragon extract, the juice of five hypnos beans, and three teaspoons of powdered root of asphodel. With a small tray in hand, you begin to potter around the shelves, taking it in turns with the other students to collect your ingredients. First comes the valerian leaves, taken from the beautiful flowing purple plant at the back of the class. You take a pair of scissors and snip off the brightest leaves that you can find, collecting them on your tray. Next comes the wormwood, a dark green weed that grows in the forbidden forest. You snip off a handful and place it on the apothecary scales next to you, adding a 50 gram weight to the other side. The scale tips to the left in favor of the wormwood. So with that, you carefully trim the edges bit by bit 
until you have a perfect balance in the scales and you add the wormwood to your tray. You approach a huge glass vase with pleated patterns and a fluorescent pink liquid inside, dotted with stardust. You pour the silver rose water into a jug, stopping exactly at 300, and add it to your growing pile of ingredients. You shuffle open a little drawer, and quickly grab a vial of the Bavarian Dragon Extract, no bigger than your little finger. To your right, there is a huge bowl of brown hypnos beans. They have a hard wrinkled shell and could almost be mistaken for dates. You pick up five beans and add them to your tray. And finally, you arrive at a huge pestle and mortar grinding a rich golden green herb, the powdered root of asphodel. You scoop up three measured teaspoons, tipping them into a little pot on your tray before heading back to your table, ready to begin your brew. A small cauldron floats just above your table with a blue fire underneath. The room works in silence now, and you carefully follow the instructions in your book. You combine the valerian, the wormwood, and half of your rose water into your own pestle and mortar, grinding it into a thick paste. There are shades of purple, green, and pink mixing together. You stir clockwise for three, and counterclockwise for two, repeating the sequence five times as instructed. Then you pour the mixture into your cauldron, and it sizzles on impact. With a wooden spatula, you fold the mixture over itself and add the seven drops of dragon extract. As the liquid comes to a boil, you take the beans and crush them with the back of a knife. You hold them one by one over the bubbling potion and squeeze out all of the juice. Then you stir counterclockwise 15 times as you pour in the remaining rose water. You are to let it stand for one minute before adding the asphodel. Despite following the instructions, it is far too thick, not at all similar to the picture in the book. The other potions around the room look the same as yours, and every student seems as flustered. You scan the page now, making sure you have not missed anything. Suddenly, you feel something brushing on your feet, and as you look under the table, you are met with the kind face of your little house elf, Daphne. She whispers now that before you add the asphodel root, you need to squeeze in two more beans and one more cup of rose water. And then, at the end, you should add a pinch of lavender to finish it off. Are you sure, you ask her, that's not what the book says. But Daphne only gives a soft smile, telling you to trust her and disappears out of sight. The professor appears behind you now, as if hearing your whispers. He peers into your cauldron and raises his eyebrow 
with a grimace before striding back off to the front of the class. Quickly and quietly now, as the professor's back is turned, you collect two more beans, a cupful of water and a pinch of lavender that already smells so wonderful on your fingertips. You squeeze in the beans and pour in the water and the brew begins to loosen now, becoming runny as you stir. With bated breath, you sprinkle in the powdered root of asphodel and sudden streaks of starlight begin to mingle in the liquid. And finally, you place the lavender nervously into your potion, crossing your fingers under the table. The liquid becomes much darker now, a beautiful rich purple that only highlights the silver even more. And suddenly, the wonderful smell radiating from your potion is making your eyelids feel heavy and a tired smile fills your face as your best friend watches on in amazement. You quietly share the secrets from Daphne. Then they check behind that the coast is clear before quickly gathering the extra ingredients. You watch with a proud smile as your friend brews the perfect potion as well, much to the surprise of the other students. Noticing the attention around you, the professor sweeps over, staring curiously at your potion. The smell hits him, and for a moment he gives a subtle smile before quickly hardening his expression and looking between the two of you with a suspicious gaze. After an agonizing pause, he produces two small vials from his cloak, filling them with your potion. And through gritted teeth, he hands the vials to you with one word. Congratulations. And with that, the cloaked professor strides back to the front of the room, dismissing the class. As quickly as you can, you take your wand and cast a spell to clean your equipment. You sway your arm gently and your cauldron floats back into the cupboard, stacking neatly inside. You collect your bag from under your table and shuffle on your thick, warm coat and your woolly hat. You slip the vial into your pocket and with your best friend following behind, you shuffle out of the room, a mischievous smile creeping on your face. Waiting for you outside your class, is the little house elf Daphne and she runs up to you hugging you tight at your knees. Daphne explains that the professor always plays that trick on first years. The recipe in the book is wrong. She couldn't resist giving you a helping hand just to see the look on his face. With a shared laughter you thank Daphne for all her help and for being a wonderful guardian. She gives a proud smile before leaning in for a whisper. Daphne tells you that she can show you a secret passage into the village that is much more fun than the usual long walk. With a new excitement, you follow behind little Daphne as she leads you through the maze-like corridors. You arrive at a small archway 
leading out to the vast grounds of the castle. In the distance, standing proud against the autumn rain, is the huge willow tree, and that, Daphne adds, is where we are going. You share a confused look with your friend, unsure how an old tree could be any help getting you to the village. But with a knowing smile, Daphne skips out into the rain, telling you to keep up. You take your wand from your pocket, hold it gently above you, and speak the incantation, Fluvia Scutum. Your wand pulses with a spectral blue light. It wisps above your head, and in the next moment, takes the shape of an ethereal blue umbrella. You walk out onto the castle grounds, and your umbrella charm keeps you completely dry as you listen to the gentle patter of the rain. You follow behind Daphne and cover her with your umbrella as you wander down towards this mighty willow tree. En route, The elf explains that this old willow was uprooted many years ago and placed in this exact location so as to conceal a hidden passageway into the school. It leads directly to the old abandoned house on the borders of the village. The willow is enchanted and will guard this secret with ferocity but she knows a little spell to get you all inside, she adds. The sprawling branches of the willow tree are peppered with golden brown leaves. Its thick trunk twists around itself as it creaks and sways in the autumn wind, standing strong amidst the relentless rattle of the rain. Then the tree begins to shudder, and the endless leaves rustle on their branches. In one swift movement, the leaves fall away and plummet to the floor, covering the damp green grass with a murky golden brown. The bare branches wrap around the tree trunk now, hugging itself in the cold wind. In the next moment, Daphne holds up her hand and speaks the spell Immobilus. The mighty willow tree expands now and its branches open up like the petals of an enormous flower. At the base of the tree, its thick twisted roots begin to untangle, revealing a small tunnel, a faint torchlight glowing within. Daphne reassures you that you are completely safe here. This passage was built to help those in need, and here you will be guarded not only by the school but by the earth itself. You share an eager smile with your best friend and cast down your umbrella charm. Then you follow behind your elf and descend down the roots of the tree into a vast gold tunnel leading directly to the wizarding village. The tunnel is infinitely bigger than you imagined and filled with a rich, enchanted air. There is a wonderful magic at work down here. It swirls all around you, creating a deep sense of peace. It's almost as if you can feel the core of the earth 
breathing slow and deep, radiating a wonderful heat and harnessing its power to give life to this magical world. As you step gently through the tunnel, lined by the thick roots of the willow, you ask Daphne how many of these passageways there are. Seven, responds the little elf, or at least that's how many have been found. Down here you feel at one with the earth, and the gentle pull of gravity allows all of your muscles to soften and relax, letting go of any remaining tension. You are moving slow and steady now, and your breathing begins to slow down as well. You are entering a state of utter tranquility, blanketed in the soft warmth of the earth and filled with a beautiful peace that quiets your mind and runs through your entire body. Before you know it, you reach the end of the tunnel. Above you is a large trap door covered with dark wooden panels. The thick roots of the willow peel off the earth around you now and gently push up the floorboards. One by one, you climb out of the passage, up into the old abandoned shack on the borders of the village. As the three of you emerge out of the trap door, the wooden panels slide themselves back into place and seal up tight, leaving no trace behind. The entire house is swaying back and forth as the wind seeps through the cracks in its walls. Outside the broken windows, you notice the rain has stopped now, and in its place is the low sun shimmering with gold over the village. There is not a single decoration to be found. The bookshelves are bare, save for the wisps of cobwebs and thin layers of dust. All the furniture has been covered with old blankets, and there are square patches on the wall where old portraits or paintings once hung. Empty candlesticks rest on the mantelpiece, and a bare fireplace sits against the far wall, cold and forgotten. You follow Daphne through the house, and for some reason you feel the need to be even quieter here, perhaps because of the desolate silence that fills the air, broken only by the creaking and twisting of the wooden shack as it battles with the autumn wind. You remember hearing many rumors about this house. Tales tell of a werewolf that used to reside here and was once a student of the castle. At the end of every month, by the light of the full moon, the student would travel here with three of his closest friends to begin his transformation. The student was a quiet, kind and intelligent boy, but the werewolf was wild, unpredictable and dangerous, and so his friends spent many months learning a powerful magic to turn themselves into animals as well. 
and through this magic, they could accompany their friend in his werewolf form, keeping him safe from himself while protecting the outside world. These four companions were known as the Marauders. No one knows their true identities, and perhaps they never will. You arrive at a huge front door that sways from left to right. A spotlight of sun beams through the porthole window, drifting across the floor. Daphne tells you that she is needed back at the castle and she must leave you for now. She will find you later at the giant's hut. She hopes you enjoyed your little detour and with a mischievous smile, she clicks her fingers and disappears out of sight. Your best friend opens the front door And with the thought of the warm tavern and a cold butter beer in your hand, you follow them out into the crisp, dry autumn air. The cobbled road in front of you, leading over a little bridge and into the village, is covered with a layer of leaves guiding your way down a golden brown path. As you wander over the bridge and towards the village, you notice the many chimneys puffing away in a steady rhythm, and the soft silver haze mingles over the rooftops, guarding this land with an enchanted mist. It is a perfect picture to behold. Before you know it, you begin to weave your way through the narrow streets of the village, filled with a wonderful parade of magical shops and cosy cottages. All around you are pockets of students, professors and local villagers, talking away happily or simply enjoying this wonderful place. Each building has their own unique character and colour, and all have two bay windows that protrude from the brick on each side of their front door. You pass an old enchanted shoemaker with a red door and golden windows. Inside, lit by a dim lamplight, is a grey-haired wizard in a ruby waistcoat, tending to an old pair of boots. The shelves are peppered with odds and ends, bits of leather, shoelaces and other trinkets. Next is the green door of the apothecary, with thick plant life sprawling up the cobblestone. The windows are lined with fairy lights and filled with exotic plants of many colours. There is a sweet shop with a bright orange door, packed with an endless array of Halloween treats. Its windows are littered with mini pumpkin lanterns bobbing up and down and bubbling pots of sticky candy stirring by themselves. Inside are other students or families with young children positively overwhelmed by the many magical treats around them. To your left is a dark door with a silver handle and black windows illuminate a soft golden light. On display are floating tweed suits, wizarding robes 
or fancy hats. Here resides the village tailor. If there is any damage to your robes or any sudden growth spurts, then this is the place to come for a slight readjustment. You pass by a charming little tea room, decorated in striped colours of pastel blue and baby pink, with hanging flower baskets on each side of the door. There is a colourful display of magical desserts filling the window, and the smell of hot chocolate and fresh pastry drifts out into the street. And finally, as you come to the end of the street, the village opens up, revealing the thatched roof of the tavern, with a proud puffing chimney and three broomsticks hanging over the main door. This is the reason you came here today, to sit in peace and quiet with your best friend and enjoy the one thing you have both been craving, a butter beer. Without another hesitation, you push open the heavy door of the tavern, and you are met with a blast of heat that soothes your body with a gentle warmth. Inside, the tavern is almost empty. One or two wizards are perched at the bar, enjoying an afternoon drink, or sat in a far corner, sharing a quiet conversation. A young, green-eyed witch is cleaning tankards behind the bar, no doubt preparing for the evening rush. She gives you a warm smile and simply asks, Butterbeer, is it? You thank her with a smile and remove your coat, hanging it by the door. You take off your woolly hat and shuffle it into your coat pocket. Your best friend leads the way towards the middle of the tavern, and you find two armchairs in front of a little log fire. You flop down into this soft, sinking armchair and pull a thick blanket over your legs. You take a slow, deep breath, enjoying this wonderful moment of quiet and comfort. There is no work to be done, no worries to concern you and nothing to think about now. This atmosphere is absolutely perfect. Suddenly, the young witch appears again, carrying two big tankards, full to the brim. She places them down on the little table at your knees, and you thank her, handing over three sickles each. You share a quiet moment with your friend as you clink your tankards together. You have a hundred things you could say, but there is no need to. You are simply happy to be together, just the two of you on this wonderful adventure. You take a sip of your cold, refreshing butter beer that is a beautiful contrast to the hot, crackling fire warming your body. You feel this refreshment tingle over your lips and into your mouth, bringing a smile to your face. And with every little mouthful, you allow this delicious drink to run through your body and relax each muscle 
as you sink deeper and deeper into your armchair. You feel your chest and your stomach becoming free as a soft comfort washes over you. With a satisfied sigh, you begin to talk away with your best friend as you curl up in your chair, enjoying your magical drink and the soothing warmth of the fire. You reminisce on the beautiful memories that you have and fantasize about future adventures, places you would like to go and things you would like to do together. You share your secrets now and tell each other your hopes and dreams. It has been a busy term for you and it is rare to have this time with your friend. You treasure this moment, just the two of you, as thick as thieves and a world of magic ahead of you. As you finish the last drop of butter beer, you hear the tavern door swing open and the silhouette of a huge man stands in the doorway. The soft light of the fire reveals the face of your gentle giant. With a knowing smile, he tells you that Daphne said he might find you here. The giant has a surprise for you, and when you are ready, you are to meet him outside. As he leaves the tavern, he gives a low chuckle, admitting that there are actually two surprises. With a sudden burst of energy, you share an excited smile with your friend. You walk over to the doorway, shuffle on your coat and your hat, and bid farewell to the young witch at the bar. She gives you a smile, letting you know that you are welcome here any time. You push open the door and head back out into the fresh autumn air. Outside, you are met by a beautiful sunset, shimmering in orange and purple through the mist of the chimneys and twinkling over the golden leaves. As you walk side by side with the giant, along a winding path out of the village, he tells you that the first surprise tonight is a little adventure together, delving into the forbidden forest. It is the turn of the season, he tells you, and as autumn moves to winter, the centaurs will begin a magical parade across the forest in celebration of the new moon, in centaur tradition at least. It is a wonderful display, the giant adds, and the king of the centaurs has given him permission to bring you along for the ride. This is an ancient ceremony, and so we must be polite respectful, and on our very best behavior. You round a cluster of trees and emerge right outside the giant's hut that is surrounded by a magnificent collection of pumpkins. They range from the size of an apple to many of them coming above your waist. The pumpkins pulse in a rich orange, giving off a wonderful magic. You wander through the pumpkin patch, taking in the fantastic display, and your gentle giant gives a proud smile as you stare in awe 
at the sight all around you. As you reach the end of the patch and arrive at the hut, the giant tells you to wait there a moment as he wanders up to his door. He turns now, giving a mischievous smile, saying, I almost forgot about your second surprise. And with that, the giant swings open his front door. In the next moment, you are greeted by the black and white sleepy cat running out of the hut and down the stone steps. They run up to you, tail in the air, and you kneel down to meet them. They greet you with happy meows and brush their soft head against your hand as they roll onto their back, demanding a belly rub. You tickle their tummy and tell them just how much you have missed them. The sleepy cat jumps up into your arms and curls up in complete comfort and an overwhelming joy washes over you. You cannot believe it, your oldest friend and guardian. The giant tells you he went back to the alley this morning after breakfast to collect this naughty little cat. They seemed to be expecting him, he adds, and have been desperate to see you since they arrived. You thank your gentle giant with a happy smile, and the warmth from this little cat's heart runs through your body, and you know that you are completely protected. No matter where life takes you, your little sleepy cat will always be here to guide your way or to soothe your heart whenever you need it. You are companions for life. In the next moment, the giant tells you that it's time to head into the forest. The sun has almost set and the changing of the moons is about to begin. And with that, you put your lovely cat back down and they trot alongside you now, occasionally wrapping their tail around your leg. You arrive at the borders of the forest and in front of you is a familiar hollow tree. As you get closer, you can see perched on one of the branches are two of the fluffy animals from your very first lesson in care of magical creatures. The smallest of the two is your furry friend and they are already hopping around excitedly at the sight of you. The gentle giant picks up the two little animals and hands them to you and your best friend. You place your fluffy companion on your shoulder now, ready to bring them along on this magical adventure. You whisper to them that they will be safe with you and they tuck in closer on your shoulder, their soft fur tickling on your neck. And just then, as you are about to take your first step inside the forest, you are met by the little elf Daphne who appears out of thin air. She has been racing around the castle, finishing her work as quickly as she can, 
so that she can join you for the changing of the moons. It seems she found you just in time. You take this moment to appreciate all of your wonderful companions. The gentle giant in front of you. Your furry animal on your shoulder. The black and white sleepy cat at your feet. Your lovely elf Daphne. And of course, your best friend by your side. And now, your group slowly steps inside the first line of trees, pushing through the thick leaves and entering the forbidden forest. You can feel yourself delving into a new world entirely. A sudden change is washing over you, a deep tranquility and utter peace unlike anything you have ever felt before. It might be the end of autumn, but the infinite leaves are as colourful and exotic as ever. There is a palette of blue, orange and purple rippling in the soft magical breeze, breathing life into this enchanted world. A powerful but gentle magic runs through the trees and into your body. With each step you take, you are becoming light and free. Gravity itself seems to fade in the forest, and you are gliding along the rich emerald floor. You place a hand on one of the thick tree trunks, and you feel an ancient magic pulsing from within. The trees radiate a powerful, healing enchantment that sends a soft vibration through the woodland as the entire forest sings in a beautiful lullaby. You feel your mind clearing and any remaining thoughts are dissolving now off into the misty starlight around you, disappearing into the depths of the forest. There is wonderful plant life in all the colours of the rainbow. Some are climbing up the tree trunks or sprawling along the forest floor. You see thick bushes filled with flowers of blue, silver, green and red, all dancing together through the specks of starlight. To your right, a stream flows almost in slow motion, weaving through the wood and lapping against the little silver rocks on its long, swooping journey. At the base of the trees and along the bank of the stream are different coloured mushrooms, enormous and proud, glowing with a golden shimmer. This entire kingdom is alive with magic. As you breathe slow and deep, you feel more and more that you are completely protected here and that these enchanted trees will guard your journey through the forest as they welcome you to their home. And 
just then, as if this moment could not be any more magical, you are greeted by your beautiful unicorn, Olwyn, running through the wood. Behind Olwyn are two more unicorns, glowing with a silver radiance. The three of them slow down in front of you, coming to a stop and bowing their heads. Your black and white sleepy cat runs up to Olwyn excitedly. The unicorn kneels down and the two of them touch noses in a greeting. Then your sleepy cat leaps on Olwyn's back, purring softly and grooming her mane with gentle licks. With an irresistible chuckle at your two companions, you approach Olwyn now and greet her with a scratch behind her ears as she brushes her head against you. In the next moment, you step confidently onto Olwyn's back, sitting just behind your sleepy cat, and this mighty unicorn stands tall and proud once again. The gentle giant has already lifted your best friend onto the second unicorn, and they turn to you with a beaming smile and a happy tear in their eye. And finally, Daphne is lifted onto the third unicorn and followed up by your gentle giant. There is clearly a powerful magic at work here, as the unicorn doesn't even flinch under the weight of the giant. The strength of these creatures is remarkable. The deep Enchantments of the forest have already worked their magic on your little furry friend who has fallen fast asleep on your shoulder now. You lift them down and put them safely in the top pocket of your coat, their sleepy eyes peeping out over the top. And suddenly, far off in the distance, you see the silhouette of a proud and powerful centaur approaching your group. One by one, more centaurs appear from the tree line and begin to circle around you. The king of the centaurs wears a crown of golden leaves and his group carry bows and arrows on their backs. The king greets your giant with a warm smile before turning to you all, inviting you to join the centaurs on an enchanted ride through the forest as they celebrate the changing of the moons. It would be an honor to share this with you, he adds. In that moment, Olwyn rears her head and your group begins to gallop off through the forest, following behind the king with a herd of mythical centaurs all around you. Right now, you have never felt more safe as you ride through this magical forest atop your beautiful Alwyn, surrounded by your closest friends and guarded by a fleet of centaurs. Just then, you watch in amazement as the forest begins to open up above you, revealing a huge supermoon pulsing with a golden glow and beaming down a soft light on the forest floor. In the next moment, the centaurs draw their bows and fire many arrows up into the night. 
these arrows erupt in a beautiful display of fireworks underneath the golden moon. The fireworks are silent but majestic. The colours swirl across the sky and take the place of the stars tonight. Some burst into colourful animals and you watch blue dolphins arching across the sky with bright green horses galloping over the moon and a dark red eagle soaring through the deep black beyond. It feels as though you are riding above the forest now, galloping over the treetops and surrounded by a beautiful kaleidoscope of exploding colour, backed by the golden light of the moon. The fireworks are giving off a silver dust that drifts down over you and a soft glitter peppers the sky. You share a smile with your companions and an infectious laughter mingles through the group, a laughter of unspeakable joy. You stroke your black and white cat who purrs away happily as Olwyn guides you over the treetops with an unrivaled grace and elegance. The centaurs are riding all around you, celebrating the changing of the moon as they fire up into the sky, adding to the beautiful display and guarding you on this magical journey. Your little furry friend has woken up now, and the flashes of colour reflect in their big, innocent eyes as they gaze up in wonder, keeping cosy in your top pocket. In the next moment, you see specks of gold dust drifting up from the forest floor and fluttering all around you. You have just crossed over into the Firefly Kingdom. These beautiful golden lights swirl around you now, carrying you deeper into the forest. Your entire body is weightless and a beautiful sensation is running through you, relaxing your muscles, softening your mind and healing your heart. You are met by a sudden gratitude for this moment and you feel so blessed to have your wonderful companions with you now. You are guarded by your best friend, the gentle giant and your furry animal, Daphne, the little house elf, Olwyn, queen of the forest, and your black and white sleepy cat. No matter where life takes you, you can always come back here to be at one with the magical castle and to spend happy times with dear friends and embark on beautiful adventures. And with that, you give yourself permission to just let everything go. The night sky creates a protective dome 
over you, peppered with flashes of colour and a golden radiance that watches over you. The tiny fireflies dot the night with golden stars now, as they drift higher and higher into the sky. And then the moon begins to shrink, and with each magical pulse it changes colour. You watch in amazement as the moon turns from gold to blue, purple and green, red, yellow and pink, before at last it glows with a new silver shimmer. Above you now, more and more stars begin to reveal themselves as the magical display finally comes to an end. The top of the forest folds back together and a soft darkness begins to wash over you. In the next moment, you find yourself back on the borders of the forest, sitting atop Olwyn, surrounded by a beautiful peace and quiet. The windows of the giant's hut are glowing behind you, and the new moon beams down in a silver spotlight. The king of the centaurs stands on the edge of the forest and offers you all a low bow. He thanks you for joining his family tonight, adding that you are welcome here any time. Across this land, you have been declared friends of the centaurs. And with that, he gallops off back into the forest. His golden crown is the last thing to fade out of sight. It's as if you have awoken from the most beautiful dream, one that took you far away from here to another world. The Forbidden Forest is home to many wonders, but you never could have predicted the magic that would unfold tonight. It was a privilege to witness. As your companions climb down from their unicorns, you gently step off Olwyn, back onto solid ground. You lift up your sleepy cat and place it down gently. It sits by your feet now swishing its tail and waiting patiently for you. You share one last embrace with Olwyn, thanking her for all her help and her guidance tonight. You whisper a promise to see her again soon, and Olwyn ruffles her head on your shoulder. You pat her back and kiss her gently on the head before she gallops off once again and disappears back to her home deep within the forest. In the next moment, you turn to see your best friend's smiling face and their little animal fast asleep in their hand. You take your own companion from your top pocket and wander over to the hollow tree. The two of you put your furry friends back up into a deep nook of the tree, giving them one last stroke on the head before letting them rest in peace. Just then, 
you feel a tug at your trousers, and looking down, you see little Daphne gazing at you both with her innocent, hopeful eyes, a soft smile on her face. You kneel down, and the three of you share a warm embrace, enjoying this wonderful moment with friends and the peaceful silence that surrounds you. Suddenly, you feel yourself being lifted as the gentle giant picks up all three of you and the group falls into laughter. Your giant leads you all back through the pumpkin patch and to the front door of his hut. You take one last look at the majestic castle standing high and proud above you and watching over this enchanted land backed by the full moon and a collection of silver stars All of a sudden, the sky quickly becomes darker and black clouds begin to cover the moon. Then you feel one or two raindrops land on your face. Right on cue, the front door swings open and as you enter the stone hut of the giant, you are met by a wonderful blend of smells and a huge cauldron bubbling away. Your gentle giant stirs the pot, admitting he has been preparing his famous stew all day, and now it is just about ready. The cauldron hovers over a little stone fireplace tucked in the corner, giving a soft warmth to the room. This beautiful atmosphere is rounded off by the gentle ticking of a grandfather clock, a gift from the kind old headmaster the giant tells you. A lovely black dog, the Great Dane, sleeps peacefully on his own armchair undisturbed by the new noise mingling through his hut. You take a seat in a second armchair right by the fire. Instantly, your sleepy cat leaps up onto your lap, curling up with a soft, satisfied purr. Daphne is helping the giant with the finishing touches of the stew, and your best friend lies down on a big brown sofa, almost sinking into the soft cushions, and a peaceful silence runs through the room. The diamond pattern on the window is illuminated with blue and silver flashes as a thunderstorm closes in above the castle, coupled with the steady patter of the rain. But here you are safe and cosy, tucked up by the warm fire of your giant's hut, stroking the sleepy cat on your lap. You are surrounded by friends, about to enjoy a wonderful home-cooked supper. Your gaze gently wanders around this charming little hut that appears much bigger from the inside. It is made from mismatched grey brick with wooden beams crossing over the ceiling. Hanging from the beams are wooden boxes of different shapes and sizes, used by the giant when helping an animal in need, or releasing one that he has raised back into the wild. 
A collection of logs are piled up by the fireplace, with different gardening tools lined up on a rack behind. Atop the fireplace is a series of candles flickering in little beads of gold. Hanging from the mantelpiece is a collection of pots and pans. Beneath your feet is a thick red rug lined with patterns of brown and gold. You curl your toes into the soft fabric and feel a warmth entering your feet. On the shelves around you is a collection of jugs and tankards and the odd book on different magical creatures. There are little trinkets, odds and ends and pots of ingredients. You admire the simplicity of this hut filled with a beautiful comfort. It is the perfect little home. Before you know it, the giant is spooning out portions of the hot bubbling stew into wooden bowls, and Daphne passes a bowl to you and your best friend before taking one for herself and perching by your feet on the soft rug. The bowl warms your hands and a beautiful smell radiates from it, the perfect remedy for a rainy autumn night. Your gentle giant places another bowl down by the fire. Instantly, the great Dane flicks up his head, sniffing excitedly. He leaps down from the armchair and begins to gobble up the hot stew. Before the giant sits down himself, he lifts up a creaky floorboard, removing a nice cold bottle of milk. He fills another bowl and places it again by the fire. Your sleepy cat perks up and jumps off your knee, strutting over to the fireplace and lapping up their supper with far more elegance than the Great Dane. As you take your first mouthful of this delicious stew, you feel the joy and the warmth of a home-cooked meal running through your body. There are so many tantalizing flavors dancing across your taste buds and a satisfied smile creeps across your face. You devour your supper and the group sits in a peaceful silence, a sign that the food is not only delicious but very much needed after a long day of adventure. As you rest here, listening to the thunder and the rain, Surrounded by the wonderful company and enjoying this hot supper, you feel yourself sinking deeper and deeper into comfort. Your feet are blanketed by the warm rock wrapped around your toes and you feel a gentle vibration through the soles of your feet. This magical sensation drifts up into your calves, relaxing all the muscles and loosening your knees. Your thighs are becoming soft and any remaining tension is melting away from your legs. As you go deeper into your armchair, you feel a pulsing warmth radiate from your stomach. 
with every breath that you take, you feel your belly and your chest becoming open and free. And as you breathe out, you feel your mind emptying of all thoughts, and you are filled with a deep peace as you let go of everything. This beautiful vibration begins to trickle down your arms, softening all the muscles and loosening your elbows. It moves down into your hands and a gentle warmth runs through your fingers. You allow your shoulders to soften and the muscles begin to unravel, letting go of any holding on. The muscles in your neck are releasing now as they melt away all tension. You feel your entire face softening. Your jaw is loose, your lips part, and your tongue releases. Your cheeks become soft, and a new warmth begins to run over your eyes and across your brow, all the way up into your forehead. Your entire body has become one with this armchair and you are washed with comfort. And as you finish the last mouthful, you put your bowl to one side and just sit with these beautiful feelings pulsing through your body with a healing magic and cleansing your mind of any remaining thoughts. You are in a state of pure tranquility. You are safe here in your giant's hut surrounded by your magical friends and guarded by the majestic castle. And bit by bit you feel yourself beginning to drift off and with a glance to your best friend you see that they already have. Your gentle giant picks up a warm blanket and places it over your friend, leaving them to sleep in peace. He puts another blanket over you now, and with a big soft hand on your forehead, he reminds you that no matter where life takes you, your gentle giant will always be here. You are welcome at his hut any time. In the next moment, the giant flops back down into his chair and with a deep sigh, falls asleep in an instant. The Great Dane curls up at his feet and the two of them drift off to dreamland together. You share a smile with Daphne, your wonderful guardian, and she tells you now to get some well-earned rest. The little elf clicks her fingers, and to your right, appearing from your coat pocket, is a small vial of purple and silver liquid, your sleeping draught. You thank Daphne for reminding you as you pluck the vial from the air. You uncork the lid 
and take only a sip, saving the rest for another night. And then Daphne holds up her hand and casts a beautiful spell on your armchair. You feel it reclining very slowly, turning into a soft, comfortable bed. Your little elf reminds you that you are safe here. Daphne will watch over you as you drift off to sleep. You hold her hand and whisper a thank you as you feel your entire body letting go. The sleeping draft is already working its magic and a new heaviness washes over your eyelids. No matter how hard you try, you cannot keep them open. All of a sudden, you feel a little furry body jump onto your bed. Your sleepy cat curls up in your arm, purring away in bliss. The lapping of the rain and the distant sound of the thunder only adds to your comfort. As you lie here now, your thoughts drift back to the moment that your wonderful saga began, with a mysterious letter arriving at your window and transporting you to a new magical world. As you sink deeper and deeper, you relive all the wonderful memories that you have of this beautiful adventure, with vivid pictures popping up on the way. You remember being guided through the magical alley by your sleepy cat and delving into the tunnels of the Great Goblin Bank, collecting your wizarding money from a vault deep underground. You smile at the memory of bumping into your best friend in the middle of the alley and sharing a magical day together, collecting your books, your robes, your animals, and your wand. You enjoyed the secret levitation chamber inside the sweet shop before a cozy supper in the tavern. The next morning you were greeted by your gentle giant and your sleepy cat who had come to see you off. You witnessed the wonderful magic of flu powder before travelling through a hidden gateway, arriving at platform nine and three quarters. You boarded the enchanted steam train and took a magical journey across a rolling countryside, seeing your very first dragon on the way. There is the image of boats drifting over the lake and the incredible sight of the castle, backed by infinite starlight and guarded by the pearl moon. You remember sitting atop a stool in the great hall and being sorted into your house. You enjoyed a magical feast before settling at last in your common room. On your first day of lessons, you met the beautiful Daphne, your little elf guardian. You flew your first broomstick, gifted by the headmaster, and took a magical journey with your phoenix companion. You witnessed breathtaking magic in transfiguration 
and made a new furry friend in care of magical creatures. You will never forget the first sight of Olwyn, the majestic unicorn, galloping from the wood and taking you for the ride of your life. After a lovely picnic by the lake with your elf and your gentle giant, you gazed at the constellations in astronomy and watched your own life's journey unfold in the stars, guarded by those that are closest to you. And then came today, Halloween. You reminisce on the lovely elven tea brought by Daphne this morning, followed by a reunion with your phoenix guardian. Images of the ghostly banquet flicker through your mind. There was wonderful food, beautiful magic, and a lively dance to finish the morning. You had a brilliant potions class, and with a little help from your elf, you brewed the perfect sleeping draft, much to the surprise and dismay of your professor. After a secret journey underneath the enchanted willow tree, you made your way through the abandoned house and into the wizarding village. You wandered the cozy streets and passed by the beautiful shops, backed by an autumn sunset. You enjoyed a delicious butter beer in the local tavern with your best friend, before you were finally reunited with your black and white sleepy cat. Inside the forbidden forest, you were greeted once again by Olwyn, and you joined the centaurs on their ride over the treetops to celebrate the changing of the moons. The memory of golden moonlight and colorful fireworks fills your mind. And now, at the end of this wonderful saga, you find yourself in the homely hut of your gentle giant, surrounded by your companions and guarded by your sleepy cat. You realize how lucky you are to be here, living your own adventure, and to have these memories just for you. You feel so grateful to all those you have met along the way. Friends that will stay with you forever. This wizarding saga will always be here for you. And you are free to come back whenever you need to. And who knows where this journey will take you next. And with nothing left to think now, you allow yourself to completely let go. Your thoughts begin to fade as you become one with this magical world. You are safe, you are comfortable, and you are free. This world is your sanctuary. This castle is your home. These friends are your family. And they always will be.